to strap in and get ready. The leaders in NRL Supercoach are incoming. Bringing you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and climb up the rankings. You're now listening to the Insight NRL Show with your hosts, Brain, Matrix, and Whisperer. Yes, welcome back to the Insight NRL Show. It is TLT for round five, and the show is always brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead and the Standard Squeeze. I'm the Super Coach Brain, and I'm here to talk you through team list trades, captains, tons more this week with. As always, my co-host, Matrix and Whisperer. Seems like halfback and fullback is the talk of the town, Josh. Uh, and I've seen you quoted uh, in the Discord that heads are going to roll at Maxwell Mania this week. How do you respond to that? Yeah, the coaching staff, uh, despite a positive a positive performance last week, the, the coaching staff is still under fire. But yes, heads heads could roll. Uh, and there could be some old favourites coming back into the fold. You know, uh, that, that tried and tested New South Wales method from like 20... 20- 12 to 2015 of just peaking the same guys despite poor performances. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm looking forward to seeing trades this week. Matrix, uh, big score, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, you had a pretty good week, mate. Yeah, I did. Um, just heading into this week with no halfbacks and no 5.8s, though. But I tell you what, I'm limping <laughs> through. I'm, I, in the 800-meter uh, run, I'm at about the 750-meter line on one leg. You guys are about 250 meters into the race. So let's see how it goes. It feels like a bit of Max King from last year where the bloke played through about 17 injuries and still managed to make the park every week. So, uh, yeah, a bit of that about you. But you've had a good, good year into 5,800th overall. Um, Josh, not the not the start that we'd both like to have. Matrix leading us by a fair way at this point in time, but we've got to say, we're, we're, it's not like we're a thousand points away. I think the difference between us, where we're at at fifty thousand and top one k, is like three hundred and fifty to four hundred points away. Yeah, I'm four four nineteen points from the top one k. So, um, yeah, all it's going to take is Zach Labart to you know do a record breaking performance this week with the captaincy on him, and uh, and I'll be right back there. But no, as I posted. <laughs> today a uh, real tortoise in the hair operation happening at the maxwell mania uh it's not about how uh, how fast you start it's about uh, how strong you finish so um, just building building blocks love it uh plenty to get through so let's rip into that but uh guys drop your questions below we're obviously live uh we're not going to be able to answer them all because a million come through and we love you for that um so make them good and we'll uh, answer as many as we can and make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't yet we would love that we would appreciate it hit the like button if you like the content and of course if you're listening to us on uh, what's tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday morning on the way to work and you, you want to work out your trades and you're listening to us on audio, hit the follow button. Leave us a five-star review if you would like that too. Um, and also join the Unlimited League. 77741 is the code. We're going to shut that one off at about round 12. So you've only got up until just before Origin to join this one. Uh, obviously, the winner gets a Supercoach Champion ring in that league. And also, we're giving away a Standard Squeeze prize pack for the top score. Speaking of, we should uh, move over to the squeeze of the week, which is, of course, brought to you by the Standard Squeeze, helping you drink responsibly and conveniently. So if you're sick of breaking glass bottles, you're sick of your beer getting warm or maybe your coffee getting cold, the Standard Squeeze have you covered. Uh, They're products that are also made from food-grade quality plastic as well. So you can measure the perfect pour in case you need to drive and you want to know how much you've had. You can go to the website, thestandardsqueeze.com, and use the code INSIGHT15 to get yourself 15% off everything in store and uh, the top scorer. It is a bit of a girls' club this week, boys. Uh, top scorer for round four is Brooke, coach of Daddy's Girl, with a twelve fifty three. Just <laughs> hey, left us all for dead this girl. week, Maddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a destroyed good girl. us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually saw the team. It was uh, it was pretty good. It did want to be with a twelve fifty three. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, she's uh, done very well. So well done, Brooke. Congratulations. Top score for the week. Send us an email, contact at insightfantasysports.com.au with a photo of your team and we'll get that standard squeeze prize pack that uh, Maddie had up on the screen there before. If you can grab it and chuck it back up on the screen, you might get a look. A little four in one so you can choose between a combat pack or a four in one. So congratulations, Brooke. And also, like I said, it's a girls club. We've had a change of leader in this league as well. It's Natalie, coach of Why Luai Why. Maybe a Panthers fan for leaving. Uh, who is in 43rd overall. So congratulations to Natalie as well. She's in a pretty good spot to take this one out. 
So uh, well done. And uh, the Insight SC World Cup, I must say, I was a little bit strapped for time, Josh, this week. I haven't a chance to do the, the leaderboard, but I see that there's a new AFL leader in, in the World Cup. Do you want to talk through him and how well he's going? Yeah, yeah, that's that's Joshua, coach of the Bontepelli boys. Um, fun, funnily enough, that that like a coach is actually on this podcast right now. So, uh, yeah, I've somehow managed to storm into first for the um for the AFL portion of the World Cup. Uh, it, it's definitely helping considering the NRL leg is not holding up its weight. But yeah, no good moves. Um, it's been top eighteen the last two weeks, so we're back to top twenty two. So depth will be tested, but. The boys are in good stead, doing much better than the Maxwell Mania. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm leading the the AFL portion, uh, but Damien is also leading the NRL portion with uh, a 2,494 rank for him in the NRL, and then myself leading the AFL with 1,903. I feel like you've really stitched me up there because I do get accused of patting myself on the back too often. So you've just made me do it even more. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um that was a bit of a stitch up. So uh, yeah. In, enjoy that. Um, Damien's also in the comments. Uh, what We've got main, Wayne Mulligan chucking a, a comment in, whisper to hit Matrix over or under eight and a last, half. Last week, what, what, what did we have? Four and a half? I smashed, I oh. smashed over four and a half. I, eight and a half, I think, is too big. I'd probably be yeah. setting a line at five and a half. We've got a correction from last week, but I'd say five and a half. So I'd be taking the unders away. Um, so if you've ever done a podcast with Matrix where he's broken the record on how many drinks he's had, that, that record is seven. Um, uh, and it was a seven in about an hour, and you can imagine what the quality of the podcast was like by the by the end of that episode. It was rough. That is some, so, that is some David Boone uh, flight to England <laughs> like vibes happening there. <laughs> it's some good numbers. I tell yeah, you, what, it was very good. I excel. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, definitely a, a place that you do well. But uh, speaking of players that might not get a crack this week, or players that are probably a little bit too injured to turn up, we'll talk through them. Fair bit going on, few injuries, uh, a lot of concussions. Well, we've got five to talk about this uh, this time around. We've got Josh Adokar, Category 1. Uh, if there's a Category 0 for a concussion, Josh Adokar had it after he got knocked the fuck out last week. Uh, so he will miss this week, 11-day stand down. All of these guys will miss 11 days. Uh, we've got Hosking, was also Cat 1, Shaq Mitchell, Kurt Capewell, and Zach Liu. Um, so those guys will miss this week with concussion protocol. Cleary and Sorensen also missing again, obviously, this week uh, with their respective injuries. Uh, but Jacob Preston, this one has created a little bit of movement there for the Bulldogs with his broken jaw, so he's going to miss a bit of time. And uh, we've seen a couple of uh, puzzle pieces being shoved around the place, Josh, for the Bulldogs. We have, we have, we have, uh, obviously, super coach, heartthrob, Josh Curran. Moving to an edge, and then uh, Sam Stephen Bradbury Hughes has just come from absolutely nowhere <laughs> and picked up the starting job. So people's expectations are going to be sky high, but I worry this is a Palasa Farmasuli situation. But we'll touch on that in the Bulldogs preview. We've also got AJ out with a hamstring tear, looking at four to six weeks for him. And Reese Walsh with his little modified uh, headgear. I see he's he's floating around training. He's probably back uh, next week, round six. I think is the talk. Uh, Matrix. Yeah. Um, oh, where'd you finish at? Mech no, caught no. him off guard. <laughs> Love that. Hey, Wait, dude, someone um, had to do it. I was so, given. I was given Ian a spray there in so the Pia, uh, in the chat. Pierre Cora still out with his ankle. Ken Palacia with a with a quad strain. Titans might get a win this week uh, with Palacia out. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, Luke Metcalf uh, tibia fracture. This didn't look pretty. NRL physio. He's got some very sick graphics and. The tibia break one didn't look good, but also like had his surgery today, cast up way up halfway up his quad, just didn't look good for him. No, I think. How are you feeling, Matt? Are you good? Oh, look, I'm struggling. Like when you look, you got to celebrate when you get pods right. Um, look, you guys might not know that yet this season, but um, <laughs> I'm still holding on to Zach Lay, but it'll come good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no. Luke Metcalf was the people's champion through through four rounds, through two minutes into round four. Um, but look, ticks out for Metcalf. That's about all I've got there. No, it's just disappointing. I've got a pivot where I was pretty happy. He was turning into a stepping stone to probably a greater five eighth. But um, yeah, we'll pivot and we'll do a right out of it. Um, but yeah, Dane. Yeah. Sorry, no, you're Dane right. Gagai is back as well um, from that medical condition. Um, 
Dylan Walker is out with an ankle. Um, Elliot Whitehead is out with a calf. Joe Chan has still not been named um, with that infected hand. Um, yeah, alarm bells are hitting me a little bit with Joe Chan there. And Philip Sami is out. Thoughts on Joe Chan? Question in the in, There was a question in the chat about Joe Chan and, and what's going on with him. What's the story? I mean, from what I can see, it just looks like it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, to, for him to come back, but Sean Bloor has obviously been named on the edge for the Storm. Are there any panic stations, Josh, initially for you? Because, well, I mean, we're all Joe Chan believers. Let's hope we see him next week. Do we have a timeline? No, I mean, it was supposed to be round five. I mean, I'm not too worried. Uh, Bloor wasn't great and played 80 minutes and the Storm lost in round four. Um, obviously, they get everyone back this week. So if there's a win coming, you know, maybe Bellamy doesn't rotate. But I don't know. Chan won the spot. He's got no reason to be dropped. So I'm not too fussed about uh, Joe Chan, I would have loved to have him as an option this week just to play with, you know, Galvin and Hines and Cleary all out. But I'm not too concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. A lot, a lot of these guys probably aren't too um, overly super coach relevant, but might be a few flow on effects maybe. But um, let's, it's probably time to dive into the weekly preview and have a chat about buy, hold, sell. So let's do that. <laughs> Now, the uh, weekly preview, as always, is brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead. And if your rates are above 6.2% and you want to buy a new home, or maybe you want to refinance, revent, renovate, or maybe you just want to save some money like the rest of us, then you can reach out to Ryan at Astute Newstead for an obligation and cost-free inquiry. His link tree is in the description below. And just use the code INSIGHT when you inquire and let him know that we sent you. Um, I'm doing exactly that at the moment with Ryan, and he's uh, answering my calls on a Sunday even though he doesn't have to. What a good bloke. Um, boys, we've uh, we've gone through every single week. We've talked about buy, hold, sell. We've added a watch list to this one. There's a couple of players on this one. So let's have a chat about the buyers this week. Compute acquired. Matrix, kick us off. This one's an obvious one. He's very popular. Yeah, Blaze Talagi. Um, he was great on the weekend. He's impressed me in his first couple games. I don't own him yet. Um, he'll be coming in for me this week. He just, at 200k, um, playing 5-8 for Parramatta, who ordinarily score quite a few points, um, even in a losing team, uh, still scored all right uh, with 48 over the weekend. I actually don't see a reason not to get playing. Not with a negative, what is it, negative 55 break. Even this week, Josh, like it's it's a no-brainer pick at the moment in center wing where we've been screaming out for a cheapie for a while. It's also just the perfect off for Jacob Gagai as well. Like you started with him and didn't work out. He's just been sitting there. You know, he's a perfect off if you don't, you know, if you need to, to get him out so you don't have to lose money there, which is great. Um, the next obviously being Kai Pierce Paul. Obviously, we are the, the leading ticket holders of the KPP fan club. And it's looking like he's a genuine keeper. I genuinely think he could be like a 2RF 5-6 at the end of the season. And... You haven't missed the boat. Yes, you've probably lost 100K, but still has a very good break-even. I think of all qualifying players, he is ranked 11th for break-even with a minus two. Um, yeah, I think it's a 60 average plus, uh, and then it's going to be better than that once he finds that attack and finds his groove in, into the NRL. And still only 15% owned, which is actually really surprising for me. He obviously started the season off the bench, which deterred a lot of people from starting with him, and a lot of people have still had those question marks with that job share risk with Dylan Lucas, but... I guess the good thing this week is that Dylan Lucas hasn't been named um, on the bench this week, so he's in the reserves. So if that stays that way, Kai Pierce Paul, obviously he's played 80 the last two weeks. I think he's a lock again for 80 based on what their bench looks like at the current point in time. So yeah, absolute lock. Uh, the third one, Jack Bostock. Um, so Jack Bostock is a guy I went early on two weeks ago, which I'm really happy about. He's got a negative 41. One break even this week after he smashed out a 77 and an 84 in his last two games. In saying that, against the Dragons and the Gold Coast Titans, probably two of the leakiest teams when we're talking super coach points. But in saying that, he is coming up against the Tigers this week. So I guess if, if there is a week to buy a Jack Bostock matrix, it's going to be this week, especially with the fact that there's every chance he could make another 100K and be 500K next week. Yeah, like, I mean, like, if there ever was a week, it was probably last week. I suppose we're here to tell you that you haven't missed the boat on both KPP and Bostock. Like, just because you missed out doesn't mean that you've missed out. Yes, you've missed out on 80K. Um, there could still be... Look, Bostock is sort of... 
Alofi Khan Pereira from last year, if I could do a comparison year on, year out. Like, Alofi got to, I think, 540 at one stage. And, look, Dolphins are on a great run. That's why we were high on blokes like Hammer and stuff and uh, even looking at some of those, like, Herbies and stuff throughout the year, Bostock, uh, throughout the preseason. Bostock's benefiting from the draw. Once the draw slows up, let's just move Bostock onto what could be a genuine gun. Um, it seems foolproof. Yeah. I mean, negative 40 break even. You can't really look too far past that, can you, in, in a in a position that we're not really seeing a, a ton of cash, Jen, and there's a lot of guys that we might want to jump off. Um, but we'll talk about them soon, and we should move on to the holes. Bit of contention around this first one, Josh. Um, I'll, I'll kick things off to take the heat off you, mate. But Nico Hines, um, I feel like he's a hold. I think he's a hold this week. Now, it obviously depends on if you have Nathan Cleary, purely because you, you might have to cop an AE this week if you're planning on holding Cleary and Hines. But I, I don't necessarily think that now with Sam Hughes being named to start, there is much less risk of a really big AE nightmare in your team. Um Nico Hines is a guy I'm playing around with at the moment. Do I sell him? Do I hold him? And there is a logical kind of explanation as to why you would hold Nico Hines, Josh. Yeah, I just think like he sucks, but him sucking is still like at Jerome Hughes or Sean Johnson being great. Like that's yeah. the only thing. It's like, yeah, look, it's probably not going to be a 94 average is what we saw last year. But when it gels, if it gels, it'll probably be like an 83, 84, which is still like miles better than anyone not named Nathan Cleary. So um, really liking him. The only problem this week is we're going to cop an AE, but there's no real standout captaincy options early in the week. I mean, you've got the Storm taking on the Broncos. You've got the Roosters taking on the Bulldogs. That's probably a slam dunk for a Dom Young or a Teddy. But if you don't own any Roosters assets, then it gets kind of grim. You know, you've got Seagulls taking on the Panthers. It's like Turbos becomes a null option. There's no Cleary. So that's the only problem that I've got with taking AE. But yeah, with Hughes starting, it definitely raises his floor for being your auto-emergency. Jesus, I nearly brought on my dinner. Um, yeah, it raises your floor of, of that auto-emergency. It goes from you know, borderline 12, 13 points to probably something like a 23, 24 at the worst. Which is fine. You'd, I'd be more than happy with a 24 as my auto-emergency rather than a 7. Um, and yes, the next one from Disco Turtle, Matrix, you can take this one away because uh, we're not saying to sell this bike. You've got to hold on. Yeah, look, he's probably not going to be the 700K guy that he was a couple years ago. Uh, we get that in the centres, but, you know, that could just be an injury away. But I think taking a Panthers centre at 400K with the pedigree, with the talent that this guy is, he's had a couple of rough, rough matchups the last couple of weeks. Um, if people jump off him, I implore them to. I think that I will keep backing him in for the foreseeable future. For audio listeners, we probably should say who we're talking about. Um, Taylor, oh, May. Taylor May. It's it's very, very rare that two centers feast in the same game. And it's been very, very beneficial for Isaac Tongo that he's had great matchups for the past, what, two, three weeks? Um, you know, left-sided edge players have gone down for the opposition team. So Tongo has been able to feast. And we know what, you know, May can do. Yes, Toto shifted sides. I don't think that actually affects him too much. I think people are maybe just blowing that out of proportion. They're trying to put two and two together, but they're getting five, not four. I don't see him being terrible. Like, his base is always going to be there. It just hasn't the last two weeks. We keep saying averages aren't consistent. They will fluctuate, especially when center wings, like especially with centers more so than, than wingers. Like, it's going to be very, very up and down. So I've got no qualms over over May. Um, yeah, it hasn't been fun the last couple of weeks, but the same people that sell him are going to be the same people that post. Oh my god, can't believe Taylor May just scored ninety. It just it happened yeah. with with the centers. So you just write it out. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And we've talked about him a little bit already, but Sam Hughes is the third hold for this week. Oh, and look, we I think there was a comment. I'm going to try and find it. I start it right at the start of the show. Uh, Wayne Mulligan even before the show started, was ready to rip into Maddie and me saying that, uh, can we go back to the last video where Brain and Matrix both said trading out Hughes to Xavier Willison was a must this week? It was, until about 4pm. So, um, But obviously Willison hasn't been named because he's got a head knock at training. So it's not like he's been dropped. He's I was about to actually ask, not made the team. I've been off social media this afternoon. Um, I didn't know actually what happened to him. So it was just a, a HIO. Yep. Yeah, yeah uh, just a head training, knock at training. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Can I jump in on this one? Because this is it. something that we pay Supercoach Gold for. If you hold your uh, finger over Sam Hughes and then go to the little exclamation bar, 14 minutes in round four, Samuel Hughes. The role of Samuel Hughes is quickly diminishing. He will become an easy flip for Broncos pop Xavier Willison as well. So it wasn't <laughs> just us. Thank you, Tommy Sangster. Oh, it was it was a slam dunk move until training. Like in that it just it just was. But now the fact that he's starting, it makes it easier to stomach. Um yeah, I don't I saw some people saying, well, maybe he gets fifty minutes. Like, are you fucking delusional? Like do you like, yeah, well, like he's not going from 14 minutes to 50, but he may get like 35, which is going to be fine. Um, yep. He can be applied this week at as your worst player in your 17, and he could be a fine AA. So if you're holding Hughes, if you're holding Cleary and Hines, I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, the holds for us this week, Hines, May, and Hughes. A couple of cells. Let's move into them. Yeah, Some absolute no-brainers yeah, to start, isn't own, it? His ownership's still pretty high, Tane Tui Piki. Um, we've now got confirmation that he hasn't got the spot back, uh, even after the concussion protocol. RTS played fullback last week with him being in the 11-day, uh, but then we see the return of Chance of Cook star. So uh, for anyone that was holding on hope that maybe Chance wasn't back ready to go, we get one more price rise out of Tane. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not the case. And I also think he's too expensive to hold um, in the event of like someone going down. It's not like... Uh, it's not like a Jacob Gagai where he's bottom dollar that you can just hold there because if anything happens, he comes in. Uh, it's just a case of he's probably got too much cash in him uh, and we can easily flip him on. Yep. Unfortunately, Matrix Luke Metcalf is a sell. Uh, he's going to miss a fair amount of time now, um, probably aiming for the back end of the season, I think, from what I've seen. But yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look good for him. So he's definitely a move on. And we were talking earlier today, Matty, he is over 10% owned, which are, which actually surprises me. I thought you were the only bloke talking about him this year. It's oh, influence look, like it, it just goes to show how much influence I have out there in the Supercoach community. <laughs> um, but look, realistically, um, the fear I have for Luke Metcalf is that there's another couple of guys that can play in the halves for the Warriors and that he might not get that opportunity back because uh, Tamari Martin, um, I've watched him for most of his career. I really enjoyed him at the Broncos and everything as well. Um, watched him revive his career there, but he missed out because he got injured and people stepped up and, and took his spot. And I suppose with how deep the Warriors are in the halves that there's always the worry that that could happen to Metcalf if, Tamari fires, if um, Chanel Harris Tavita fires, um, if he gets the opportunity. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's the worry for Metcalf. Uh, hopefully, we can see him back in first grade this year, if not next year. Yeah, absolutely. He's had a fucking horrid run of injuries, Metcalf. So, hopefully, yeah. he comes back bigger and better. So, what about the next one? Um, speaking, of, speaking of injuries, a bloke that's struggled with them. He's been interested to fit this year, but Ben Trevojevic lost 4.4K last week, 310. So if you didn't sell last week, then you haven't lost much. Uh, a 37 break even. His play on field is not great. Uh, got through a fair bit of base last week, but only played 50 minutes, scored 36. Uh, was on 34 at halftime, so two points in 10 minutes in the second half. Corey Waddell is just eating into these minutes. We've gone 72 minutes, 80, 61, 50. Uh, and Waddell is just getting a, a more increased role. They've lost two games in a row. Uh, I don't think Burbo has been up to standards. And the minutes are uh, diminishing. So I would probably just try and cash out. You got your little price rise. Uh, move on to anyone. I mean, he's a great downgrade to Blaze. It's going to give you a hundred k, and you can do what you want with that. Um, but yeah, I sold Burbo last week just because I needed to, uh, and I'm happy about it in hindsight because I definitely would have sold him this week if I haven't already. That is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm moving on Burbo to Talangi. It's an absolute no-brainer pick at, at this are point. You, um, are you looking at uh, someone maybe in our watch list? Do we have a stinger ready for this week or, or we don't? Nope, I don't. I didn't make one. So, well, anyway. Uh, watch lists. Yeah, some some, some jazz hands. Uh, Mike Acevo, <laughs> 53 points in his first game back for the Parramatta Eels. Could have had three or four tries. Uh, they had so much ball. Morgan Harper dudded him so much. Um, Tigers jammed well. A couple of bad balls. I mean, Junior Bolo put one into Rose Ed. Uh, Gutho struggling a little bit at times with his thing. But I think how often they went left, I think Sebo, it's just going to be the makeup of volume, isn't it? Yeah, he's not the greatest winger. But if you give a bloke 20 chances a game, he'll score one, one or two of them uh, on an average. I mean, he's average, you know, around a try game. So 
Yeah, we saw that on the weekend. You got 53. You're paying a 54 for him. Uh, he'll go on runs. And if you don't have enough money to jump on a Gutho, then I think uh, a guy like <laughs> Stains the Sevo stopper. I think Stains was the Morgan Harper stopper, and it just it made Sevo get a frostbite out there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think Sevo's a guy to look at. I, I don't know if you put this in here to have a bit of a jab at me because I'm now a, a newly Marcus Sevo owner. But I think with just how much they're going to go left, it's just a case of volume for, for Sevo. No, I, I put him in there because he's not on the bubble yet. It's his second game this week. So it kind of makes sense to watch another week before you, you jump on. And the same goes just, for a... Which is by sight unseen, you know. Just you without could a just, Yeah, just rip in. Uh, look, to be to be fair to you, Marcus Evo's played enough NRL for us to know, for the same team, for us to know that he's a decent pickup. Um, so I'll, I'll back you on that one. But uh, it doesn't count for anything unless you go and get in the other, like, three Parramatta players around him. So um, hopefully those are your trades yeah, this week. Yeah, I might... I might get um, Morgan Harper this week as well. That way I can have Dylan Brown, um, Sean Lane, Morgan Harper, and uh, and Mike Acevo. Uh, Bailey Simonson's buy- back for uh, Harper. He's gone. And then, oh, sweet. And then when the buy rolls around, I'll be playing. Uh, I'll, I'll have to see if Jacob Gagai gets a call up or <laughs> Sam Hughes. I'll see if Spencer Lane Hughes, you know, off his suspension. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a great time. Uh, Jaden Campbell's the second on the watch list. Obviously, his second game, he looked okay game one, but he just plays for a fucking terrible team. So that that's the issue for him. Uh, he Remember the hype that he got in the preseason before everybody found out that he obviously was injured and going to miss some time? He was yeah. everyone's 5 eight, one. But But I don't know. Like, what's changed? Like, none of us, like, eight to three of us weren't keen in the preseason. I'm still not overly keen now. I mean, he's got a 48 and 50 minutes with no attack, which is, I did, he yeah. might have had some attack. Um, which is sort of what he was like. He, we always said he had value, but when he played fullback, he was at like a what a fifty-one or something like that. So it wasn't screaming yeah. value. Um, and with Lockie Galvin now, it's like, why would we spend up when we can just get that from Galvin for two hundred and fifty k cheaper? Yeah, he had a line break and a line break assist um, so any points. in attack. So yeah, yeah, his base was pretty ordinary, but that's kind of again what we said in the preseason, right? But if, if yeah, I think Galvin fight, saved us. If we expect the Titans to be dog shit, then we just we can't put faith in them to to get good. Their That's draw right, gets man. pretty stinky. They've got the Cowboys at uh, Queensland Country Bank. They've got the Raiders at GAO. Two pretty tough places to go away, up in North Queensland and then down in Canberra. They do play mainly at Seabus, uh, but then they play the Warriors at, Mount, at Go Media. Sorry, uh, Then they play the Storm, the Cowboys again. So it's not a great time to be uh, alive. Um, it doesn't really open up until... Really ever. They have a really tough sort of up and down draw. I guess the ideal time would be round 14 against Souths, Tigers, Warriors, Sharks, Parramatta, Manly. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any interest at all. I think Lockie Galvin um, being him and uh, Dylan Brown just doing Dylan Brown things. I've got no interest in in jumping on, uh, what's his name? Jaden Campbell. Yeah, what's his name pretty much sums him up about interest levels from us. Um, but he is a watch because he's on his second game. So he can just sit back and watch before his price goes up next week. If he rips up, then go nuts. But uh, Matrix, Cam Munster has been uh, mentioned. If I search the name Cam Munster in our group chat, I would find some relevant messages from today. So yeah, do but, you want to talk to me about that? But the, but the messages have only come from one person too. There's been about 10 of them. Yeah. They've only come from <laughs> one person. Well, um, if you have a look and back to the Luke Metcalf messages and you probably should have jumped on. So maybe Cam Munster's the answer. No, I'm forced to do a trade in 5-8. Had a heap of money in the bank. Um, Am weighing up my options with Cam Munster. Of course, it would be smart, which is why he's in the watch list, um, to maybe have a look at him over the next couple of weeks. Maybe get a little uh, price drop while he's working his way into it. But when Dillbags hasn't really been what we'd hoped, at least with his scoring. Uh, he looks all right on the eye test. Look, maybe Munster could be really good. Um, it's just hard coming back from injury, I suppose. You'd love to wait a week. And you can. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, but the the reason you go early is because you just want this big pod play that, you know, you, know, you, you want to beat everybody to him. And if you think Munster is going to be that kind of player, let, there's so much fucking risk for me I just, coming off yeah, a guy I'm, that couldn't run last week. If this was any other injury, if this was a, a rotator cuff, if it was, you know, a, a, a pec tear, if it was any other injury, I'd be tempted. But it's like, fuck, no kick, may, maybe no kicking, maybe no running, maybe just being 2018 Grand Final Cooper Cronk. Like, the only problem with the groin is just like, I don't know what to expect. 
And he's obviously fit enough to play. Like the Storm aren't going to, you know, put their best player in the park um, and for if him not being done. But it's just like any other injury, broken hand, broken arm, like you'd, you'd be like, sweet, that's fine. But anything lower body with Munster, it's like, shit, I just want to give it a couple of weeks. And if he comes out and goes 100, 100, fuck, you know, tip my hat to you. Yeah. Like you're a better man than it's me. It's not a great matchup this week either. No. And I think also we've been following this quite closely and maybe me more than everyone else because I drafted him in with my first pick and draft and I've been sitting there you were, you stewing were on, on this. I had to call Lifeline after about round three for you. You were about ready to trade <laughs> him for Luai. You messaged me like, do I just, do I just take Luai? Well, I mean, there was plenty of uh, comments coming out. I think the Cam Smith leaked audio on the bloke podcast um, was floating around and they were talking about how Munster hadn't even broken out into a sprint yet. Um, so I'm like, fuck, this could be bad. Uh, and then obviously he's come good. But because this is such a volatile injury and it's such an inconsistent injury as well based on the reporting of it, it's it's like one week he's good, the next week he's shit, the next week he's good, and then he can't run again. You know, So there's way too much going on for me to... Problem is the draw. Broncos, Bulldogs, um, Roosters. All right, cool. Let's give him those three games to get through. Then you play South. All right, we'll get through that, and then we'll pick him up. Titans, Sharks, Para, Manly. Sweet. We get four weeks out of Munster, and then it's origin. Straight, straight origin. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. God damn it. So by the time he gets good, by the time he's like primed for, for like fitness, his draw gets good. It's like, oh, we get him for three weeks, and then he's, he's gone. Not ideal. Not ideal. That's why I love um, doing that. Let's uh, so uh, I guess it's a good segue talking Cam Munster into the Thursday night game, which is the first game of the round, eight PM. We've got the Storm versus the Broncos at Amy Park. Uh, I don't expect you to travel down to this one, Matrix. It's a little bit of a trek for you. No, and you know what? I'm pretty excited. I, I live a little bit away from Brisbane as well, so getting home at midnight's been a little rough the uh, the last couple Broncos games. But I'm pretty excited to sit on the couch and watch this one. Munster's back. As it drops out, unfortunately, we talked about Sean Bloor. Obviously, he's starting while Joe Chan is still not to be seen. So, uh, yeah, we, we don't really have any news on Joe Chan yet either. Um, and then we've got the only change for the Broncos being Takura comes in onto the bench for Xavier Willis and who copped a head knock at training. So that not, not much going on for the Broncos, but Munster coming back, I guess the talking point then becomes that there's two players here that are kind of piquing people's interest in Ryan Pappenhausen and Jerome Hughes. Now, fullback and halfback, we spoke about at the start of the pod, is, is a very relevant position this week because people are stuck with potentially two non-playing halfbacks. Um or people are looking to trade out Turbo after his stinker last week. So how do we play that? How do we how do we feel first of all, Josh, about Pappy this week? You just spoke about the storm draw. It's not ideal. Uh, he doesn't have the goal kicking back yet that we've seen. Is there any interest to go a Turbo down to a Pappenhausen? There's plenty of interest. Um, I think the storm the storm are good enough that no draw that's not Penrith doesn't really bother them. Uh, I think they're good enough to put up points against anyone and he looks very involved and you get Munster back, which is just great. Uh, I do want Nass, I want Nass back before I look at diving into to Melbourne um, just because Nass generates a lot of quick play the ball, which Grant and Pappy both thrive off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't talk you out of Pappy. He's probably the second or third best fullback this year. I think he's behind Teddy in terms of averages. Uh, he is 691K, so you're getting a pretty hefty... A nearly 100k discount on him over Turbo. A break even of minus six. Uh, I'm not going to say this is the last week to get him because it's it's not. I mean, I'd pay 850 for Pappenhausen if he's fully fit, even without the goal kicking. I'd still pay that for him. So uh, it's just you can get him cheaper this week. Uh, he's coming off a uh, pretty good two weeks, 132, 78 uh, up against the Broncos at Amy Park, into the Bulldogs at Amy Park, uh, into the Roosters and Souths at Allianz Stadium. And then it gets pretty, pretty nice with the Titans, Sharks, Para, Manly, by Newcastle, Warriors, Dolphins, Raiders, Tigers. I want Pappenhausen from, goodness, round eight. And I'll, I'll hold the bloke until probably 20, 21, and then jump back on Turbo. I think he's got a good strength of schedule to finish the season. So Pappenhausen's a guy I want. I am definitely not ruling out picking him up. Uh, at the moment, I've only made one trade, but I'm not against making a second and uh, and going turbo to Pappenhausen. I don't really worry about the Broncos too much. I think they do have points in them. I don't think they're some kind of, and Matrix, I, I hope, will back me up here. Like, you're not the defensive powerhouse that you were last year. I think some stuff's still clicking. Yeah. And, you know, Melbourne on Thursday night, it's not a fun place to be. Uh, so I actually really like the Pappy Shop because I think you can get the same output from Turbo. Like, Turbo... 
until we see it, like we can sit here all week and say, oh, he'll come good. He'll come good. He'll come good. What if it's around 15 and we're like, oh, he still looks good, but he's averaging 60. It's just a little dirty. It's still good. It's still good. (laughs) (laughs) Matrix, uh, how much weight does Amy Park carry? Because they've got five of their next seven games at Amy Park. Yeah, and good run. Like, it's always good to play at home. Um, it's probably going to start to get a bit colder in Melbourne. I don't know. It's hot as buggery up here at the moment, so um, still. So, yeah, look, it's just different conditions. Um, the storm comfortable at home. And and you're right, I'm not really s- s- as scared playing the Broncos as I am playing maybe last year. And just remember, Scotty Drinkwater played the worst game we've ever seen him play and still scored still seven, seven last week. Yeah, with no goal yeah. kicking with about 17,000 points and errors. Um, I think the thing for Pappenhausen this week, and there's a good point here by Mr. Kalia, a long time country. No, it's not by Mr. Kalia. He was commenting. Sorry. Uh, good comment here by JSW Take. A Pap's perfect VC this week in a week where if you have Cleary and uh, Cleary and Hines and you're struggling to get that free loop, Pap's could be a great first look. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he scored 200, 190 points in round one, what was it, two years ago against the Broncos? From memory, did have the goal kicking, but... Um, yeah, definitely worth considering. But also, uh, Tom Trevojevic's draw plays Penrith at Four Pines, then plays the New Zealand Warriors in Go Media. So, Penrith in Penrith, New- the Warriors in the Warriors. Um, yes, I understand Turbo has a great run, but so does uh, Walsh. So does KP. I would say that their draw is better. In saying that, though, Titans at Seabus, Parramatta at Four Pines, <coughs> Camber at Four Pines, Dolphins, um, and then. Broncos at Suncorp. Then a buy. Do we think Turbo goes off to Origin, boys? Yes. Yeah. Has to. Um, here's my here's my argument for holding Turbo. I was going to hold this for captain's talk, but um, the Warriors oh, like against it. fullbacks this year are fucking awful. Aside from, let's just call Will Kennedy not even a fullback. Like, if you don't count Will Kennedy's 23 in round one, <laughs> the, the Warriors have let in 132 to Pappenhausen in round two, 93 to uh, Rapana in round three, and then 117 last week to Kalen Ponga. So <clears throat> they've averaged over 100 against fullbacks if you take away that Will Kennedy. I know it's cherry-picking stats. So even if you take 23 and you add that 23 in, he's still – I mean, if you add all that up, they're probably still averaging 75 to 80 against fullbacks this year. So the matchup for a fullback against the Warriors is actually quite nice, and we've got Turbo playing them next week. Oh, well, I was just about to ask you this, and Michael Griffin just brings it up because this is the dilemma that I'm in. Is it Penrith at Four Pines into Newcastle at, sorry, let me rephrase it. Is it Penrith in Penrith into the Warriors in New Zealand, or is it the Warriors at ACC? Is that a, is ACC a core? Yeah. So, yeah, is it, or is it the Warriors at a core into the Sharks at a core? Because we've always said Trell's got this hard cutoff point in seven. We can rip the bandit off then, but the, Two Sydney games in a side that's that's not as good as Manly. I know Manly lost back to back, but I would still take their forward pack to get more roll forward than what I would. I mean, Turbo had chances last week. Like, let's not say that the Dragons played exceptional. Like, Turbo had chances. He just dropped the ball a million times. So, I'm also facing with this dilemma of Turbo or the trail for Paps, uh, and I'm probably leaning towards. Oh, I guess if I if I opt to go trail over, if I opt to, to trade at trail, I save myself a trade. Because if I do turbo to Paps, well, then we have to Might do... Might want to get him back. Or, or we, and then we also have to do Trell to another fullback in round seven. So there's two trades. Or we can yeah. just save the one and go Trell to um, there. But as you just said, the Warriors have leaked a million points to fullbacks and the Sharks gave up 18 points in about seven seconds um, last week to the Raiders as well. So I'm also faced with this dilemma and I don't, I don't know what to do and I'd love to hear your thoughts. I don't know what to do either. I can't help you. Um, nice. I'm considering. I'm considering holding both, holding both Trell and Turbo. Um, I'm going to follow my plan of going Trell in round seven to Walsh or KP because that's initially the plan that I had. Um, I'm going to trust the fact that Latrell plays the Warriors, who we just talked about leaks a million points to fullbacks this week. I'm going to back that in, and then potentially Turbo can then double dip on that stat next week. So if I'm right and they keep leaking points to fullbacks, you've got two really nice fullback matchups back-to-back for both of your fullbacks two weeks in a row. So whilst you might want Pappy, 
I mean, we're diving pretty deep here into one topic, but like whilst whilst you might want Pappy, you might want KP, you might well, want Walsh when he comes back. I feel like maybe the plan is to hold them both, and I don't hate it. They do yeah. kind of seem like a luxury trade. Like you've got gun fullback for gun fullback. If they if someone asked you this question at the start of the year, like you guys added Latrell for a reason. Um, like you guys added Latrell because you thought that he was going to go great over the next couple of weeks. Like, yes, he stunk it up a couple of times, but I still don't think it's worth a trade. Well, Justin in I'm... the chat is spot on saying what we think is a good matchup this year, the players score shit, and then the bad matchup, the players score as well. So, yeah, who who's playing Penrith? Who's playing Penrith this week? So, I might just captain them then. Turbo, um, turbo. <laughs> so you can <laughs> trade him out. In saying that, te- te- Teddy scored 70 in round one in Vegas against um, the Broncos. Trell scored an 80 in round two. Dylan Edwards scored a 40, uh, 52, but I'm not really going to look at him in the same mold. I'm going to look at Cleary's 127 when he just dominated that second receiver right-hand side. And then last week, Drinkwater also scored a 70-odd. And we expect this Melbourne Storm to be probably better than all of those teams barring Penrith where Cleary scored 121. It's tough. Like, I, I really... I think... If you if you don't own Trell, we're not buying. Like the problem is, if you don't own Trell, you're not buying him. But if you own him and you own um, Turbo, which is I think you and I, I Brain, I think we both have that combination. Yeah, we do. And we want we want Pappenhausen. It's like, what do we do? Um, because I have that. All, I have that three headed dragon in fantasy because you can obviously have three wing fullbacks, so that's really <laughs> handy. Um, but no, I, I don't. I honestly don't. Know. I think if you had if you put a gun to my head and said trade one, I'd trade out Turbo. Keep. Latrell and then flick him to KP in round seven. Ian Johnson no. wants you to save it. I boosted for Sevo last week. Do you really think I'm the person to say save trades for? <laughs> yeah. Good call. Right. You ran out by like round 22 last year. The precedent has yeah. been set. Just go hard. I boosted for Adam Elliott for God's sake. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, uh, it might be the round to, to make a move, but I think the play for me anyway, for my team, is I'm going to hold Trell and Turbo. But. I think you're going to be upset. You're going to be upset either way because I think something. I think something's going to happen. You, you either buy Pappenhausen and he gets a 65, or you don't get him. He gets a 121, 123, or you trade Troll out and then he just decides to become Troll and just score 140. Ian Johnson talking way too much like common sense That's in this chat. Be. Like we're here yeah. emotionally trading our players out, and it's, Ian Johnson says if you're undecided, just hold him. And it's funny, it's funny in the discord, I was having dinner with my mum tonight and like someone asked me, what, what trade should I do? And I was like, well, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. And yet here I am on the, on the live stream being <laughs> like, oh, let's just throw it at the wall. No, I just, I think that all three of those guys are great in their own right. I think based off the eye test, Turbo hasn't done it enough for me. Troll still scored 70 points last week with one line break assist. Like Turbo scored 55 with a try assist and a line break assist as well. So, and Turbo doesn't have the goal kicking, which Trell does have that, you know, elevator. That's probably 10, 12 points. Yep. Good shout. Well, Let's move up. on. Um, Friday, 6 p.m. Matrix, do you want to take us through Bulldogs Roosters? Yeah, Friday, 6 p.m. Um, oh, it's five up here in Queensland. Sorry. Um, 6 p.m. normal time. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Blake Wilson in for Josh Adokar after he collided with Luttrell in the last game. Sam Hughes has bailed, absolutely bailed out owners. Like there is I, a would, super I wouldn't go the early crow because I'm still seeing a world where he plays 15 minutes off the bench and doesn't come back on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. I just saved a trade. Even if I'm disappointed, I still saved one. Um, and especially with our ex being out this week. Um, but Curran to the edge for Preston. Uh, we've got Harrison Edwards and Kaltoga on the bench. Um, but you guys are both Josh Curran owners. Uh, tell me what you think about maybe 80 minutes from Curran on the edge compared to maybe 50 minutes in the middle. Um, Braino, you go first. I I think it's much of a muchness, to be honest. Like 50 minutes in the middle, 80 minutes on an edge. Does he get 80 minutes? Does he rotate into the middle and play both? I think that's probably more the reality than anything. Um, Harrison Edwards has been seen to do a bit of both as well last year, especially when he played elevated minutes. So I think I don't see too much effect for Curran, but if he does spend time on an edge, which he hasn't done in previous weeks, there's definitely going to be uh, some attacking stats or an opportunity for attacking stats. It's just a shame he plays for the Bulldogs. Um, 
you know, because obviously there's going to be less attacking stats than if he played for a good team, like the Roosters or the Panthers or fucking Broncos. Tigers. I'll throw the Broncos in there for you, Matty. Sorry. Thank Tigers. you. Um, I don't mind it. I don't. I, I think it's good. Uh, if you've got him, you keep him. If you don't have him, are you rushing now, Josh, to go and get Josh Curran? Like it? Um, not. not this week. Next week, yes, because he'll get the jewel next week. So it makes it easier to bring him in next week when he gets the jewel. Uh, getting a lot of metrics love in the in the chat. We start a few <laughs> of them, so we'll come back to them. Um, no, I think Curran's floor is the same. Eighty minutes on the edge, the floor is the same as fifty minutes in the middle. I think he will get you fifty-one points. 52 points with some better attacking upside. So against the Roosters, it's not ideal, um, but, yeah, you know, it's still a fine play. Yep, call me mid-sip then. Um, yeah. Shout out to Paul. He wants more from Matrix because we're both shit, um, and Matrix is top 5K. Fair, fair enough. I'll cop that. Hey, I, and I, Mr- post, I posted my ranks like of the fantasy sports I played. Great AFL fantasy, great NRL fantasy, and the one sport I'm supposed to know what I'm talking about, just utter dog shit. The fantasy whisperer. Coming up, um, Mr. Callio said he needs a Matrix segment, beers and green arrows. And and that's pretty much what we've seen um, from Matrix all season. So Maybe I need to take up drinking again. Maybe. Why did you even put it down to my drinking, drinking and not like my deep analysis of the game? <laughs> <laughs> After he's slow saying the word drinking. That's a good start to the segment. Uh, um, <laughs> a fair bit of Roosters news. Uh, obviously, Ter- um, Terrell May back to the bench. I don't really care. Like, I, it doesn't matter where he plays, but we're happy to play him either way. Uh, Lindsay Collins returns from a hemi uh, and Crichton starts. Gus Bus is back, baby. 75 break even, 400k. Satili off to the bench. Now, Satili probably provides more versatility for Trent Robertson through the middle. Um, I'm expecting probably 60 minutes for Crichton minimum uh, with the, you know, potential that he, he could play 80 with, you know, him and Nat just locking at 80 and then um, Trent Robertson just rotating his middles through. Crichton, 400k. Uh, the Giga Chad is very Satilli. tempting. If you own Satili. It, it, is, it is that Spider-Man meme, isn't it? It's just the like you're just pointing at the same player. But I think Gus has got more upside. And we we were on our knees for him, giving him the, the Gorkork 3000 in the preseason. So what's changed? We thought this role was going to be there. We thought the 60-minute edge role was going to be there. So I'm not really understanding the pushback from a lot of the public on the no Crichton debate. We um as as we normally do on a Tuesday, Maddie gives me a call on his way home from work, and he and he's like, "What's going on with Crichton Satili? Like, what do I do? Like, how do how do we play this out? Do I trade Satili? What what's going on? I I would not be surprised if they just switch spots and play the same minutes. Like, could that potentially happen? Well, last week Satili played fifty four minutes and Crichton played twenty six. Literally just a like for like swap. Um, Satili's gone at. 0.6.9.7.9 ppm. Crichton's got 1.1.7.9. So production's there the same, but I, I just Crichton's the better player. It's not oh, close, sure. and it's like for 400k, I'm 95 percent sure I'm doing the Satili to Crichton but, trade. But with a 20 and a 28, what is it? A 20 and a 28 in his rolling 71 average. Break, it's 71 break even, which is not yeah right. No, but you can wait a week. Uh, but you can also wait. just go for 120. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think you can wait a fair. week and be completely safe with this rather than just going a week early. I feel like going a week early is extremely reactive to the news. Maybe we could just keep him, sit there for a week, not boost for Gus, and just get him next week if he's elite. What if it's all not right, a boost right, for Gus? Johnson. What, if it's a, what if it's a one trade for Gus? If it's a one That's trade it. fit, Gus, I don't hate it. I absolutely right. don't hate it. I think Satili stocks are down. We all have, or well, I have Satili as well. Um, I'm just not going to Gus this the week. The problem is, in that price bracket, there is no one. Like, I looked, so for example, with my side, for example, I, I would have 501k in the bank. And like, Tom Eisenhuth is the top prospect. And I'm just like, I'd rather just gamble on Gus for the vibes and also the upside. Vibes, 100%. Yeah. Big vibes from this trade. Um. Also, you said the words satility and versatility in the same like sentence, and I thought you were actually trying to go with the play on words and, and versatility. 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 Yeah. It was very impressive. I didn't even pick up on it at all. Um, <laughs> let's let's move on. Friday, eight pm. We've got the Knights and the Dragons at McDonald Jones Stadium. And look, <laughs> Did you even care about this game. I think, yeah, no, nah. 
not at all. Uh, let's talk about the fact that Phoenix Crossland's back where he belongs on the bench. Actually, no, he'd be in the reserves if he said uh, he was back where he belongs. But Jaden Braley finally finds a start after being 700,000% owned in the preseason. Um, so it's good to see him get some time now and probably earn that spot. Disa- um, disaster for Supercoach. Disaster for Supercoach. Awful. Awful. I would have loved to see three, way. four more rounds. Yeah, three, four more rounds of him just playing bum minutes off the bench. But Crossland's back to the bench. Good for the Knights. Bad for Supercoach. Uh, Lucas in the reserves as well with Gagai back. Obviously, Lucas played right center last week with Gagai out. But Dan Gagai, Gagai is back from his medical condition. Um, whatever that was. Uh, so he is back, which is good for the Knights. Um, but yeah, it's even better for Kai Pierce Paul not having Lucas on the bench. And that's the big positive there, I think. Yeah, I think Kai's a must. Like, I, I don't like using that word, but I think he's just a, a must have. I think he's a borderline keeper. Um, 65, I don't think I saw him do much. So that's always positive. Can we skip the Dragons metrics? Like Michael Molo in for har- your your heartthrob, Harm Sele. Uh, and then we've got... A big fan. Tom Eisenhuth at lock. Like, there's not really much else to talk about there. Um, yeah, do we see this as a good out. matchup? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bag out the Dragons any more than I need to. But um, I do think it's a good matchup for Kalen Ponga. Yeah. We saw um, this last week. <laughs> like, maybe maybe yeah, Flano is the supercoach killer. Yeah, maybe he is. And maybe I could be completely wrong, but I'm still willing to go out and say that I think the Knights are a better attacking team than the Dragons probably are defensively um and yeah i'm gonna be putting a vice captain tag on Callum ponga this week just in case this is stopping me shane flanagan has stopped me from straight captaining Callum ponga um not that i need to but i could vice captain somebody in an earlier game but yeah i'm gonna vice captain ponga this week i don't and, know I- um I, I could think of many better things to do with my friday night at eight o'clock than to sit down and watch the 15th place team take on the 13th place team like are you going down to the stadium? I'd rather put spoons in my eyes than watch this. Can we swap these games around? I'd much rather I'd much rather watch the Bulldogs play at eight o'clock than I would the the like the prime time slot on a Friday. Anyway, that's this game's had way too much time. Can we um, can we go back? Sorry, can we go back to you putting spoons in your eyes? Yeah, like, what's scoop, that about? Scooping my eyes out than watching this game. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, but, Saturday but, three. But Brayley could be a bailout for Lussick still though. Like no. in. Oh. That's sideways, got, if, if ever I've heard a trade. Well, you've sideways. got an 18 and a 19, and he could be 280K next week. Yeah, but I mean, Lussick's still going to make cash. Like, people are throwing their hands up about Lussick. I think Lussick has still got probably another three weeks. Like, let's – what's he look? He's he got 55 break even. He could hit that. Like, he, we said this on Sunday. He could have had two or three dry assists. He went very close. So, um Maybe we just shift back to Levi. You know, maybe we just we just rotate between the two of them. Um, Saturday, three o'clock. Uh, the Bunnies taking on the Waz at a court stadium. Uh, key news out of this: Thompson in for Johnson. Unfortunately, no Jacob Gagai sighting. Uh, and the Cappuccino is back for Shaq Cappuccino. Mitchell, who continues his trend of being in and out of the team every single week for the Bunnies. Been a, been a little bit of chat about Jack Whiten. He could have also featured in our watch list because he's on the bubble as well. Him, Justin Olam, it feels like a lot of people are wanting to get really risky in center wing. Uh, Mike Acevo is another one that some dud content creators uh, went out there and bought. Um, but not a whole lot out of the, out of the what are they called? Bunnies. They're that crap. I don't know their name. For the Warriors, though, there's much more relevant news. Charles Ingle Cook start in for Tane Tua Peaky slash RTS, who goes back to center. With Tomato Martin coming in for Shinil Harris Tavita, who's got back to 14, which I think just shows you that uh, Shinil Harris Tavita's role in this team is just the utility because he came on and played six last week, looked okay, um, but went straight back to the bench. And they brought Tomato Martin in, which is disastrous for my fan- fantasy <laughs> trades. <laughs> yeah, no good. No good there. We've got Nia Kore back as well. He starts on an edge with Capewell out with concussion as well, which is great. I'm a big Murata Nia Kore fan. Um, we Matrix and I both started with him last year in Supercoach, and yeah, but we probably didn't get what we wanted from him. But I, I just like watching him play. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. So, um, but good for the Warriors. CNK back at the back, RTS at centre. As much as everybody's calling, saying RTS needs to be the fullback, I, I disagree. I think CNK did more than enough last year to show that he is the fullback of this team. So, a lot of chat around Jackson Ford. Um, obviously, he's had a great couple of scores. If he's had four weeks in a row of attack. He's had a line break or a try assist or some kind of attack in every one of those games. You're paying a 64 for him at the moment. 
take out those uh, those attack. He's gone 62, 59, 49, 47. I'm not sure if I can rely on a mediocre meat and potatoes back rower to, to get me, you know, attacking returns every week when I'm paying 640k for it. Um, I've just seen a little bit of chat floating around on him on the socials, and I would just warn people away from that because a 45 is coming just as much as a 65 is as well. So 2,783 players are buying him, buying him at the moment. So what you're saying is you're paying Ford Raptor price for a Ford Escape. Oh, I would say you're paying. Tell us what you do for work metrics. <laughs> no, you're paying. You're paying, you're paying <laughs> a Ford. Ra- you're paying a Ford Raptor price for a for a, a Triton. Yeah. Yuck. Either way, yeah. I'm not a car salesman, but that me doesn't neither. sound like a good deal to me. Um, Saturday, five thirty p.m. I've got the Sea Eagles and the Panthers at Four Pines Park, which normally you'd think Manly at Four Pines is a great matchup, but then you see the Panthers. And uh, anybody versus the Panthers is not a good matchup, which is why we had Burbo on the sell list this week, which is why people are considering selling Turbo. Uh, I think if you look at Turbo's last three games against the Panthers, it's, I think, a top score of 60-odd, which is very unlike Turbo, even in the run where he went fucking ballistic in in 2020. I think so. If you look at his last three games, 26 in round six last year, 62 in 2022, and even when he averaged 140 in 2021, he scored 68 against the Panthers. Mm. So they're just a super coach killer. Um, so back to the team, Manly 1-17. to Did you know this is DCE's 310th game for Manly, which would make him the all-time record holder for the most games ever played? Not, I hate Manly with a passion. So sorry to any supporters of Manly. But How many, um, how many, how many did he play for the Titans? Uh, he, uh, he played zero. Um, <laughs> how many backflips did he have for the Titans? <laughs> exactly one. Uh, Into circus. Uh, yes. Um, Wait, so what's going on? So, at- so, so 310 games is the most for Manly. Yep. It, Damn. Cliff Lyons that's got it. Cliff Lyons. I, I, thought, record, Steve, I, thought, yeah. I thought Beaver would have been up there. Or oh, I guess Snake would have been too injured. So with Glenn Stewart. Yep. Yeah, right. Good Good for DCA. Too many punch-ons Queensland, for Glenn Stewart. Queensland hero. So I'll never hear a bad word about DCA. Um, yeah, I mean, they're 1 to 17. It's cool. Let's, let's not say anything. Um, yeah, is this the death of Liam Henry, or is he still like a fine play for one more week until Curran gets job? I don't know. What do you think, Matty? I'm still playing him over Sam Hughes. Um, that's that's about where I'm at with it. He's been serviceable. Uh, maybe they ease him in. Um, maybe I just need to start looking at alternatives in coming weeks. But Liam Henry, he has not put a foot wrong for me yet. I'm just going to keep uh, flogging that dead horse. When's um very popular pick Spencer Lenu back? Because he's still in my team. Maybe is he coming back soon? Hopefully I can play him. Mate, we get, we he's get only Josh, three weeks away, isn't he? We get Josh Car- around eight, yeah. We, we get Josh Curran back. So or we get Josh Curran soon. Um, yeah, Liam Henry he hasn't put a foot out of line. He hasn't put a foot right, though. It's just like, here's your lane. Don't, don't move out of it. Stay in it. Make your 35 tackles and give me your 10 hit ups and we'll, we'll call it a day. Um, but yeah, that's that's not huge. Uh, unfortunately, good NRL teams don't have much super coach news to come out of them. That's just mm-hmm. it is it is what it is. Um, Brad Schneider will this will probably be his last game for Penrith until round 13 with Cleary back uh, after the bye. Yep. How many people are going to buy Brad Schneider in round 13? By the way, he'll be on the bubble. Probably make some cash. Who's going to be tempted? All the casual super coaches are going to come in and go, oh, this guy's got a negative break even. Might buy well, what do you do if Cleary just doesn't get named in rounds? How many people will, people will jump on galore? Um, it's a bit like your Kale Eero tweet today. Uh, I think like nearly a thousand people have bought Kale Eero. Yeah. Yeah, who's on the buy. Has yeah, a not great match up this week. Um, <laughs> moving, moving into the late... Yeah, oh, sorry. Sunday? Yeah. 7.30? Yeah. No, no, your your notes are wrong. Saturday, it's seven thirty. Saturday, seven thirty. Dolphins taking on the Tigers in Suncorp. Uh, Ray Stone comes in for Max Plath, who has been suspended for two weeks following that hip drop tackle. Uh, Kenny Bromwich on the bench. Sean O'Sullivan and Jared Wallace on the extendeds for the Tigers. Sullivan of the Jaden variety uh, starts at five eight for Lockie Galvin, who has also suffered a two week suspension thanks to that hip drop tackle, ruling him out of Rookie of the Year. Did the same thing to Jacob Preston last year. Such a stupid fucking rule. Um, Fainu of the Latu variety on the bench with his brother, Samuel. And Alex Twyla returns to the bench with AJ Kepoa or Asu Kepoa out of the team as well. Boys, if the Tigers win this game, that'll be three wins in five weeks. 
they won four games all last season. So the Tigers would go 75% of their best in five weeks if they win this one. Great. I'm not even going to think about that because it just makes me then start to get my hopes up and then they'll get dashed and I'll be very upset when we're It's so funny. Is, like, you and I, all preseason, we're like, fuck, if we get 12th, that'll be like, we play 24 games. If we win seven, eight of them, we'll be over the moon. Mm-hmm. And now we're like, yep. hey, can we like... Is there a chance we get like Is there a chance? But no, <laughs> we get I, 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 I think this will be a great game. Tigers have shown a little bit of defensive prowess after the back of that humiliation against the Raiders in round one. Uh, but from a Supercoach standpoint, we've talked about Jack Bostock already. Uh, Hamiso, is he an option or are the Tigers just shown enough defensively to sort of rule him out of any kind of captaincy varieties? Okay, Breno is gone. <sighs> Matrix, you're the resident um, Hamiso owner. Is there Can I just any... tell you how good is it that 690k Hamiso with a negative break even? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Talk about vibes. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, Brano has had a, a, an episode. I think he's he's media shit itself, so we'll carry on. But is is um, Hamiso some kind of captaincy player this week, especially if you have a free loop, or do you think the Tigers have shown enough to probably just be, that, that be a waste? Yeah, I think I would prefer – like, I have Ponga, full disclosure. I haven't really thought too much about Hammer, even though I had last week. I think I'd rather a Ponga against St. George than a Hammer against the Tigers. There's certain stats that keep popping into the back of my head, like only 200s um, in the last little while. And, you know, sometimes he can score three tries and only get 90 points. Um, He's still averaging 95, though. Like, how much can you back against the man? He's the top averaging player this year in Zubigoch, which is, you know, uh, elite for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, dry Suncorp track, hopefully much drier than what it was last week. Um, but yeah, obviously it's going to be a good game. I think it'll be a, a close contest, which what we couldn't have said for weeks gone by. Um, Sunday, four o'clock Cowboys taking on the Titans at country bank, still country Queensland bank stadium. Um, Cowboys won a 17. Uh, my heart throb Jake Granville's 200th game. Shout out to him. He somehow is still getting a run. For relatively good minutes in 2024. Yeah, I mean, I think he's just a stopgap. Um, I've seen him play fullback before. He's played most positions, and he can just go out there um, and just be serviceable to give some other guys a rest. Um, look, I think that this could be an absolute bloodbath. The Cowboys weren't that poor offensively last week. They were just really bad defensively, or basically they just couldn't catch a cold out there. Um, but yeah, this could, Cowboys could beat the Titans by 60. Not spicy. Do we still have Brano? Is Brano back? Can I, can you guys hear me? Okay. We can. Hello. Cool. My headphones died. So I'm like just using my speaker stereo at the moment. So just bear with me. Um, I missed what you said for like a minute, but I'm back. I'm good. Oh, we were just talking about Um, the Tigers. Stout. Defense and if if it is wasting a vice captaincy or captaincy on Hamiso this week, oh, uh, I I don't. I actually think Hammer could be a decent captain option this week against the Tigers, and I guess like that's the appeal, really, isn't it? It's like we bought Hamiso for these two rounds, right? Yeah. So are you trying to take selfies, Josh, like mid podcast? No, no, my cat's looking very adorable, so I just want to take a quick photo of that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. That's that's forgiven. Um. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, back on the Dolphins, I think you you would have picked Hammer for this two games for the for this yeah. little run. So um, I, I don't mind backing him in. Um, I, I feel like he keeps burning me every single time I doubt him. So maybe if I if I say that he's going to do really well, he'll do really shit. So maybe the old reverse psychology will work for me. Who knows? But um, are we so are we up to the Titans? Uh, Jojo for yeah, we and, um, yeah, Harley we just said yeah. we just said somehow Jake Granville's still getting a game with sizable minutes in 2024. So shout out to him. What a man! What a man! By and the we're way. just saying the Cowboys um, could score sixty as well. Yeah, that's that's hard. They could. Yeah, they, that's they absolutely coming could, from which is what we spoke for, about. For anyone listening, that's coming from two Valentine Holmes owners, by the way. So just take that one with a pinch of salt. <laughs> um, uh, Philip Sammy out with an ankle. Camperi or dropped. From this game as well, which is weird. Um, I mean, did he deserve he to be dropped? Before? I wonder when the coach is getting dropped. Yeah, fuck, he's on limited time, isn't he? Um, but he'll never get dropped, to be fair, though. No. Um, 
he's come out and look to be fair they'll 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 back him in and they'll give him time he needs time he's not picking up a, an amazing uh roster with this team either so uh yeah they'll they'll give him time there but yeah Fafita still on the bench David Fafita he's been named on the bench there but uh who knows what's going to happen late I, I kind of see him starting um, I have no interest in Fafita like some, someone messaged me this week and said oh like when's it time to buy Fafita it's like it's probably never <laughs> like like the Titans suck. I need to see the Titans be good before I jump on Fafita. And same thing with Munster. By the time he bottoms out in price to be good enough to buy, it's straight up to origin for him. And it's just like, well, mad. That that Tino ACL has really hurt Fafita's stocks, I think. Mm. Um, you know, to have that go through, like that go forward up the middle. Like I, I still feel like Dave Fafita is good enough to do enough by himself. So I think there's still a bit of relevance there, but obviously he- He's going to be playing Origin in the middle of the year too, and th- that is the, probably the Jay, ultimate slander. We'll Jay, Jay just goes whack in the live chat with a tenor boy as a poor man's Brody Croft. <laughs> that's that's over the back fence uh, for six. <laughs> yes, but to be fair, get Brody Croft back in the NRL. I'm sure he'd do some damage at some of these teams. Do right at the Titans. Bev and French to the Tigers. What are we? The Tigers to the Titans. What are we? What are we saying? No, um, Tigers are too good. Yeah, so for feeder, Jojo feeder on the wing, Harley Smith Shield on the wing as well. Preseason love interest, but probably not going to get enough game time. Sammy out with his ankle, AKP dropped. Jermaine Jolliffe moved to prop from 13. Had some good stats on him, you know, playing over 55 minutes. We discussed these on Sunday, but I'm actually really tempted by Aaron Clark. Uh, he's always been a guy when he's been given game time, he's done well. I think he had a run of starts last year where he was averaging in and around the mid 50s. I'll have to do some digging on that and follow me on my socials and I'll. I'll post some Aaron Clark propaganda, but I think from memory he was doing well with the minutes that he was given. So he's a guy I could be interested in as well if you know Angus Crichton wasn't the guy that we went with. But I don't know how much I can trust Des Hauser right now. I don't think anybody can. No, so kill. not too much, not too much relevance there, I guess, for the Titans being probably the worst team and probably the team we see a lot of super coaches targeting. Um, uh, and this was with a line break assist as well, and. 50 points in 58 minutes sounds great for anyone else that's not priced at 830k. Um, he just has, he just, his standards are so much higher. So it's not like a Morgan Smithies where we're like, oh, cool, he got 50 points. Like for Fafita, you're paying 83 for him and you're wanting 83. And we've got, when we've got guys like Grant, Brown, Hines, Cleary, any fullback, like they're not performing. Like, do we want another one of these overpriced guys that we can buy? in five or six weeks' time for a fraction of the price. And the problem with the Titans is they have just no attack for me, and I've just got no interest in Fafita at all, uh, probably until after Origin. Yep. Yep, fair call. Uh, Sunday, 6.15 p.m., the final game of the round. We've got the Raiders versus the Eels at GIO Stadium. Tough little road trip for the Parramatta Eels, I think, in this one. Um, Raiders, otherwise 1-17, to aside from Mariota coming in for Hosking, who misses this game with a HIA. Then we've got Bailey Simonson back at centre. So obviously uh, Morgan Harper, um, who is uh, son of Sifa Talakai, he's dropped. And uh, everybody's favourite, Wiramu Greg, is back on the bench. Remember when we talked about Wiramu Greg that one time? Uh, I think there yeah. was an episode maybe really early in the season where we were like, who would have thought we were talking about Wiramu Greg in this podcast? Um, but, you know, the biggest news out of the Parramatta Reels is that Brendan Hans has dropped out of the 17th, which doesn't necessarily mean that he – won't be a late inclusion because we know BA likes to fuck around with his lineup really close to the game. But it's positive for Lusick. Maybe that enables us to hold on to Lusick for another another round without too much stress. What do you guys it's, think? He's, he's a hold. Absolutely a hold. But the question is, is he a play? If we get to game day, I mean, we don't even get to game day. It's the last game of the round. I'm probably still playing him. Otherwise, it's him or Ethan Strange. I don't know. I'm up shit, Craig. I'm so probably playing like... both those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I don't know. I'm probably, I'm there. probably playing. I think I, I just saw enough close to the line, and uh, the Raiders. I've, um, whatever. Are the Raiders? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. hard, isn't it? It's tricky to pick them this year because they've actually been okay. In, it's in tricky to pick them last year too. Like they was the same as last year. Like they won a lot of games close, and to win, like I'm a Collingwood supporter. For anyone that follows AFL, Collingwood had the most single score wins last year, and we won the flag. But like, variance can only go so far. No, but like, it's like it can it can go both ways. Like it it can just swing. Like I think there was a stat in the NFL that I think the Vikings two years ago had the the most amount of single score games, and then they were dog shit the year after. 
like there's only so many times you can win close games before the variance takes over. And I felt the Raiders, they just go through that. They just go through phases where they'll be up, down. I don't think Ricky Seward's a great coach. So I don't think the coaching is going to have a huge impact. The roster is slightly below average. And I think we, I think it's the Dolphins effect from last year. It's like, you know, a lot of people doubted you in the preseason, started well, slight fall off. I don't know. I thought that the loss of the Sharks was like really telling because I don't think the Sharks are a good team, especially last week. Yep. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, a lot of people are looking at Clint Gutherson. He wasn't in our buy list this week, but I mean, Josh, you did a bit of a deep dive on his draw. It's just a luxury. Like, it's not like a slam dunk. I think Gutho could average 95 between now and like round 12. Like, he's just that kind of guy, but his draw is very up and down, but he's involved a lot. I think the most promising thing, and we said this on Sunday, boys, was just like his involvement was off the charts. Like, he probably had the most touches on the ground out of anyone, but the draw is a little bit how you're going. So, the draw for Gutherson is the Raiders away, Cowboys at home, Dolphins away, Manly away, bye. Broncos at home, Melbourne away, Souths away, Sharks at home. Um, And that's between now and round 13. So, I was just doing a little bit of a comparison between him and Travojevic because that's going to be a popular fullback swap this week. Gutho or Pappy? Pappy. Gutho. Pappy. And hey, mate, you're 5,000, thumb 50,000. So I think everybody yeah, should probably look at Gutho. I just like saw how involved Gutho was last game. And I have a look at the draw for Parramatta. And I know it opens up for Melbourne shortly soon. But... I just think with Moses out, they're going to rely more and more on on Gutho. And he got 100 against a Tigers that defended quite well, I felt. So I just think that we could see a couple of hundreds with Moses out uh, with Gutho. Look, yeah, we might see it from Pappy, but we haven't really seen it yet. So, Did you say oh. we haven't seen it yet from Pappy after he scored 100? And how many did he score in round two? 123, something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just think Gutho. Honestly, I just think Gutho Gutho's going to score better. Well, that was the thing. I put, up, I, put five up, weeks. I put up a similar. tweet. I put up a tweet on the twenty eighth of March, which was the start of last round before he played this week, and I just put the tweet ninety four point three. Since two thousand twenty two, Clint Gutherson has played eleven games with that Mitch Moses and averaged ninety four point three. That'll be now twelve games with an average of probably ninety eight. Um, yeah. A low score of 56 and a high score of 166 with 500. So now make that 600 in 12 games that Mitch Moses. So a 50% 100 rate. What a bad clip to be going out just quietly. Not bad at all. Thanks for backing, thanks for backing up me saying Gutho. You're welcome. If for some reason you're just kissed on the, on the, on the bell end and have no fires to put out and you have... You don't have KP. You have what other other fullback combination it'd be? Do you just go Paps? Like and, do you go? Yeah, him. Do you go? Do you go Paps and Gutho, or is KP oh. still just too good to, to pass up? I think KP is still too good to pass up. Is it so Says much money you traded him money. out after round two? <laughs> if you go Paps and Gutho, that's like a one point four mil compared to like what were we spending in the preseason? One point seven, one point eight. Yeah. Yeah, 892 KP was to start the year. And then we had Turbo at 820 or something like that to start. So, yeah, we were eight, what, 1.7 mil to, to start the year in fullback. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you're going to pick up uh, Tristan Saylor this week, Matrix. I already own him. So, yeah, Matrix, instead of streaming in draft, <laughs> Matrix just streams in classic. So, he'll buy Tristan Saylor and then just trade him out for a while to he's back. <laughs> Yeah, I just like to rotate my players to Broncos players. Um, yeah, let's let's Billy uh, Walters in smoothie at the moment. They're my two hookers. <laughs> It'd probably be working out okay for you, to be honest. Um, but let's let's move on. We've uh, obviously covered all the games now. Let's chat about captains' options this week. There are a few. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, captain. Now, for anybody who missed the start of the show, we talked a little bit about Pappenhausen against the Broncos being a half-decent VC loose game of the round. How do you, Matrix, feel about taking a VC on a Thursday night? Or is it just the straight captain on a Thursday night is a no-go? Or are you looking at Thursday night as a bit of a wasteland in terms of captaincy in general? I mean, yeah, look, I I hate the straight C on a on a Thursday, but I don't mind the VC. I just think if the 
if that's the better matchup and it allows you to captain earlier on in the round, then by all means go for it. Don't be scared just because it says Thursday there. I'm still not 100% convinced Pappy against the Broncos is the best matchup. Also, not a, captain, not a captain thing, but just talking on, on looping. If you own Cleary and Hines, you're not trying to either them out, start Nico because he locks out last. So Cleary will lock yeah. out um, on Saturday at 5.30. But if you start Hines, your flexibility for captaincy is oh, wide yeah. open, especially with looping. So start Hines over Cleary this week just for tactical reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, I still like Pappy. I think, as I said, with without the goal kicking, uh, it's a little bit different. But if I pull up my little uh, my little do wacky, I can I can relive the pain because I remember it was round one. I want to say of two thousand twenty two, and it was a Thursday game, early kickoff, and I think a lot of people jumped on him. Uh, no, it might have been two thousand twenty one. Might have been COVID year because he scored seventy in round one. I just look back at that game. I had I have fond, mem- fond memories of it. Um, I'm talking out of my ass. Obviously, I can't find this game, but scored a lot against the the Broncos. I think Scott Drinkwater showed enough in a very poor Cowboys side in a very wet game that there was points to be had. They get Munster back. Uh, they, they are just missing Nass. That's the only person now that they're missing. Uh, I think could be a great score. What would you take as a free loop? I think that's the better question. I'd take like 90. Yeah, absolutely. My captaincy options have been in the bin this year especially so far. For free, especially for a free loop. Like you and I resigned to getting an AA anyway. So yeah. we're taking we're taking a free loop. I'd be yeah, taking 80, 90. Um obviously Tedesco, Dom Young, both these guys are huge this week against the 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 dogs. I if I do go Crichton, might just stick the VC on Crichton. Just oh. because if you, you get to try, you know, there's 90 points and I'll just take that to the bank. So anyone else in this Roosters game you're looking at? Vibes. Are you a bit of a bit of a Luke Keery enthusiast? I am absolutely not, um, so I won't be going there. I'm a Dom Young owner though, and I'm very tempted to just chuck the VC on Dom Young and just hope he scores a hat trick against the Bulldogs because there is every chance he could. could, do. could um, do. So, and again, this is why we bought Dom Young is for this matchup and and the next one. So I don't mind it. Um, I think going week. back to your Pappenhausen against the Broncos, are you looking at round four in 2021 where he scored 197? Might have been round four. I knew it was early in the season. He scored have about 150 years by halftime. Yeah, have you seen yeah, it was Broncos 124 team against team South in round one. Though? Have a look What'd at you, the Broncos team from 2021. Yeah, but was it, it's not. Oh, no, we're not. No, this isn't Broncos slander, mate. You don't have to take everything personally. Just, we're talking about how good Patton Housen is. Um, you know. It, in a week of free looping, Ian Johnson asks, "Is Terrell May a VC?" Now, normally we'd say no because it's you want your VC to have some kind of upside to take the loop. But if you're, if you resign to an AE and Terrell may come, oh, I don't know. I just don't see Terrell may going huge. Like I think last week was like the best that we're going to see of Terrell may. And that's like topping out of the 75, 80. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I also I think just want to point out that wasn't me that ever spoke over them that time. So you YouTube comments can shut up. Cause that was those two that fucked up then. Not me. <laughs> hey mate, I'd do it audio. as much as you do. Um, Ponga versus the Dragons, another VC loop option, or even a, a C if you've got the Pappenhausen VC on. Uh, I kind of like Ponga against the Dragons. Uh, I know the Dragons have been it. okay this year. Um, but if you're a KP, uh, and you mentioned it earlier, Matty, if you're a KP owner, oh. it's kind of immoral, isn't it, to just put the VC on him and hope he goes massive against the Dragons? Mate, like the Dragons getting pumped by the um... – who was it? The Dolphins just rings in my ears and just thinking, you know, the Knights could absolutely rip them to shreds. I know the Dragons have been better. I know the Dragons have had some really good games. I know they beat a poor Manly last week, but they have these lapses and I just like would not be flabbergasted if Ponga scored 180 versus them. Ponga has a 90 average over his career against the Dragons in six matches. Um, I'm trying to find out. So he's versus the Dolphins once and got 121. So that, that's we can't really count that. Um, he averages 98 against the Raiders in seven matches. And he averages – that's it. So 98 is his best average if we discount the Dolphins one match that he's played. Yeah, and then he's you, you uh, good average was. against the Dragons. If you, you, if you own Ponga, you have to captain him. Sorry, I yep. spoke over you. I think so. I think so. 
I feel so. Let's uh, move on to captains then. Latrell versus the Warriors. We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but Warriors obviously concede a lot of points to the fullbacks this year. Uh, Will Kennedy at 23 because Will Kennedy is a – well, I don't want to slander him too much. He's not very good. Um, then you've got 132 Pappenhausen in round two. You've got 93 Joey Rapiner, uh in round three played fullback and then 117 in round four against Kalen Ponga. The Warriors are just leaking points to fullbacks. So if you missed the start of the show where we talked about this for about 37 minutes, you're probably going to be keen on Latrell Mitchell this week. And I am, I'm kind of tempted as much as he's been a little bit lackluster from what we would expect from Trell. You're never going to get that really high involvement from Latrell Mitchell. You're not going to get the guy that does fucking 22 runs and RTS type fucking 280 meters in a game. That's not Latrell, but he is going to inject himself into a game when he decides to. And whenever he does, he's usually going to find some attacking points. And with the Warriors' tendency to, to leak points to fullbacks, I kind of like that matchup this week, even as a VC, depending on what your plans are later in the week. If you've got a Val Holmes against the Titans, who we'll talk about soon, that could be a play. Um, you know, you're a little boring shit. Is there any temptation for you to chuck a VC on him? Yeah, VC. <sighs> I, I'm a little on it for now. Like, I'm still very up in the air on what I want to do. But like, I'm, I'm just looking at myself personally. Like, I've got no options after... After Troll, unless it's like Sebo captaincy or Zach Labart, and it's just like that's not happening. So for me, it'll probably be a captaincy on Trell if I do opt to go there. Um, three o'clock, good time, fast track at a core, definitely on the cards. Um, Warriors have shown uh, propensity to propensity to leak points this year. Uh, as much as they've been good, they have given up points. They gave up a lot to Pappenhausen. They gave up a lot um, to drink water. I think I, I wasn't really listening before. Um, but they, they have definitely given up points to fullback. It's just that, like, I worry about this forward pack, and people are, like, very quick to criticize. I'm a huge troll stand. People that follow me on Twitter know that. I'll go into bat for the bloke every chance I can get. I don't think this is a troll form slump. I think it's just the warrior, the, the what are they called? The bunnies pack, just getting monstered. And it's like, Tavita Tullo versus Adam Fennell Blake. Sick. Tom Burgess versus Mitchell Barnett. Also, not great. Um, and then Tohu Harris versus Cam Murray is kind of neutral. So it's just like you've got two big forwards. And then off the bench, it's like Michael Cheekham and Sean Kepi and Dave Mowali. doesn't really strike huge fear into the eyes. So I, I worry that a platform is not going to get set. Uh, they had a lot of ball against the Bulldogs and couldn't execute. I don't know. I just, I'll just i let everyone know because I'll, I'll trade trail out. He'll score 143. So, yeah. Nice. Um, nice Ian Johnson ball. mentioned there's a bit of rain around Saturday too, which is relevant. I guess we looked at Val Holmes and the Cowboys matchup and we thought that was going to be a beauty last week. And it obviously was a bit of a bludger, even though there were points scored in it, there were a lot of errors and, and obviously there wasn't many super coach relevant scores from that game. So definitely something to consider some good, a uh, little inside, well, not inside knowledge, but good uh, BOM knowledge, I should say. Um, what about Hammer versus the Tigers, Maddie? Because you're the owner of Hammer. Any you love for him because 79, 94, 112 in his three games this season, he's uh, continued to prove us wrong every week. Look, I'm not going there, but I wouldn't hate it if I do. With blokes like Hammer, I just have a look at how he's a little like Trell, how he doesn't always insert himself in the game. And I just get super scared of a 30 and it derailing. Like if you're a head to head player, 100% Hammer. Hammer or Trell this week, but I'm a lot more comfortable vice captaining one of these blokes. And Hammer's playing too late in the round for me to vice captain, so I'm staying away from Hammer this week. In saying that, with those three stats playing against the Tigers, who have been better this year, um, but yeah, look, it's I wouldn't blame you if you did. I just think it's a vice captain option. What about Val Holmes then? Because Val Holmes or Drinkwater, potentially, both of them. It depends on who you own. But I'll tell you what, if you're a Val Holmes owner or if you're someone that has a bit of cash to spend in the center wing, you would be <sighs> remiss looking over Val Holmes, I think, because I won't lie, I've looked at how I can get him into my team to attack this Titans matchup. And I, I kind of love it. I think it might even be the best captain option this week. What do you reckon, Josh? Yeah. Trap trap game though is it potentially no. Um, they're the paying a dollar thirteen against the Titans. Yeah, but Who, how much? 
if if I said to you last week, what's turbo over and unders line, and I told you it was 55 and a half, you was you were remortgaging your house and taking the overs on that. Yeah, 100 uh, percent I think I think he's the best. I think if you have if you have KP and Ham uh, and Hammy, so if you have KP and, and Val, like it's just the easiest decision to VCC uh KP in the in the Valentine. Like it just is. And I'm terrified, doesn't it? Like I'm absolutely pet- petrified of this game because he could go absolutely ballistic. But what I hope is that Des Hasler just thinks that there's only one player on the team and Zach Laybutt has a field day. <laughs> fucking Laybutt. This guy's got more mentions in this podcast than fucking prime Andrew It's Jones. his last leg. He's got like a nice I mean, break even. And seen... the only reason the prick hasn't been punted is because of this game. <laughs> at Zach Laybutt's mum's dinner table, they're talking about Val Holmes more than Zach Laybutt. But you keep bringing up <laughs> Zach Laybutt. Oh, no, I know how you feel about Luke Metcalf, okay. except Luke Metcalf was fucking good at the sport. Yeah, no, I was going to say, this is, this is my Luke Metcalf. At least he's performed for you. No, nah, look, I, I think Val Val is the is the best captaincy this game. Uh, I think you could just run rings. Uh, and now that I've said that, um, he will score probably 31. So I am very sorry for owners. Yeah, so anybody who's on drinky, that might be the option. For sure. Um, all right, that'll do for VC and C options, but we have we really are being pretty poor in terms of organization this week. But we're not going to play guess who, but we can do the punters club. Uh, Josh, Ian have you Johnson's, got a bet? Ian Johnson's gonna be petrified. He's gonna he's gonna hate us because he's a huge guess who. Um, I posted my bet in the uh in the chat, but you guys never got back to me. So I've got um I've got the the roosters minus ten and a half, that's Braino's leg. I've got my leg at the Panthers minus three and a half. Maddie? Parramatta Eels at two dollars and five against the Raiders in Canberra. Oh, like all right, spicy. Well, our ten dollar investment, boys. Uh, we are down. What are we round five? So we've had five bets. We're down fifty dollars, which is not great. Uh, but if we get this one up, we're going to be uh, getting eighty two dollars back for our money. So eight dollars and twenty two cents uh, as as our legs. So that's going to be the Roosters minus ten and a half. Parramatta head to head into the Panthers at minus three and a half. Should we talk? Should we talk about how we did last week, or we just move on? Because uh, yeah, we went, we went off good. We went zero and three. Our our fullback, our super coach multi did not do well. We had Trell anytime. We had RTS anytime. And who was our third anytime? Turbo, Turbo, Turbo. Turbo. So three big red X's. <laughs> yeah, no, no yep. good, no good. We should have. We should have had. I don't know why we didn't opt to take uh, Jackson Ford anytime into. Uh, I think Mark Nichols crashed over and some other bum, someone, some Ford crashed <laughs> over. It's, it hasn't been a good time. Um, I was saying to Matty today on the phone, that we have our little debrief, that um, I feel like if I don't make any moves this week, I eventually will become good because all of my players that I played massive money for in Harry Grant, Dylan Brown, uh, Latrell Mitchell, Turbo, all of these guns, Cleary, Hines, they're all going to come good in one week. I'm going to win the $1,000. And that's that's what I'm here for because surely they can't all do shit the whole season. Yeah, you can't even use the sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit soundbite because they just no, haven't been good. It's always shit. It's just always yeah. shit. Um, so yeah. Paul, you obviously missed the start of the episode. He just wants a World Cup update. Um, can confirm that AFL is flying and that's all it is to know about. Um, no, I think Brainer will get... And I'm uh, sixth the- in NRL. Nice, at a boy. I think um, Brano will get the full results up uh, in the Discord, and then we'll post them to socials tomorrow. But yep. can yep. can Do confirm it. yours? Yours truly is heading up one section of the World Cup, but it's not the section I wanted to be heading up. <laughs> Very impressive. Um, let's. Uh, we've got a, a ton of questions, so let's dive into some of these start questions. Then. It's question time. Let's answer your questions for the week ahead. Now, Josh, I've just got to confirm that you've got access to these questions before I leave you in the lurch for a couple of minutes. Oh, I do. So you, you, you told me last time. So we go to banners on the side here and we have uh, round four. Qu- no, that's not where we go. Uh, I've got the stars. Yeah, go so I'm ahead. just going to scroll right back to the top and we're going we're gonna, to work from the top to bottom. So Brano is doing his customary leave. So he's left me in charge of uh, the software. Le- and I, customary I, leak, I believe it is. I haven't hosted a podcast in uh, about nine months. All right, let's go from the top. Wayne Mulligan, can we get back? Oh, no, we, we already discussed that one. We're off to a great start already. Um, I see Disco Turtle has been very active tonight. Can we boost for Turbo to Pappy? I, I think a boost is probably a tad excessive. Like, if it's a two-trade move, that's fine. 
Um, but I wouldn't be boosting for it, especially if you'd boosted. Like if you've already used two boosts, it's like, what are we doing? Yep, I agree. Um, I just think it's not boost worthy, but it is trade worthy. If it's a luxury trade, in my opinion, um, you're going to get a bad score this week out of Turbo. Uh, that is customary playing the Panthers, but everyone has to play the Panthers at some stage. So, wouldn't it be so funny for the Panthers just to shit the bed this week and Turbo just becomes 2021 Turbo and scores like 110? That'd be great. That wouldn't be great uh, like, if I tried out. Uh, the Shockmaster. Great, great gimmick. Um, is Mortalo Elliott by Jules and Talon May to Val, Olam, and to Luggy too aggressive? Before I answer that, a lot of love for Justin Olam. Seeing, seeing a lot of people get around Justin Olam. What are you thinking? Because no Lucky Galvin now for, for Big J.O. Um, yeah, I think that that hurts him a little bit. I don't think I can bring in Justin Olam in Supercoach. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a pun in fantasy, but um, I don't think you need to trade out Molotalo. I suppose what you're saying is that's the only way to get you to homes. But Elliot's a lot more expensive than Olam too. I just think that there's probably better ways to get to homes without going Molotalo. Mr. Brain, we were saying a lot of, a lot of love for Justin Olam. Uh, I don't know if it's warranted. He has had three tries in two games, and now he loses his 5 8 I, as a Tiger supporter, would love to support this move, but we need to be realistic in remembering that the Tigers are also coming off back-to-back wooden spoons. Like, what do we really do? We really expect Justin Olam to come in and average seventy this year? I don't. I don't. Especially just historically, looking at what he did at the Storm on a very, very good team, was he ever a super coach must buy? No, he wasn't. So I, I don't think I think it might be a little bit trappish if if I'm honest. Yes, the negative massive negative break even is fantastic, but if you're using him as a two week cash grab, maybe great. I'm very happy to discount last year because Justin Allen was injured and he's checked out. But 2020 49, 2021 56, 2022 51, and then just 83 this year. Never been super coach relevant. And in a in a much better side, much better team. Um, so not, not a guy that I'm keen to be picking up. I think it's just a little bit reactionary and then you also lose, you know, Galvin and then the draw doesn't get amazing. Um, Dolphins this week, but then you're playing, uh, St. George who have shown good defensive presence and then playing Penrith Broncos and the Bulldogs who have been okay defensively as well. So yeah, um, we'll, we're obviously going to beat Penrith in Bathurst. So that's just a customary, but it might be a slugfest as it probably has been the last couple of years. So, um, not overly keen. Um, you're back to hosting, so this will be the last one from me. But Brent asks, should I use my fourth boost in four weeks? You absolute champion. We we never used to have boosts, and we don't need to have max players for buy rounds anymore. We only need 13 players. Better to get the team sorted now. That makes a lot of sense, Brent. But it's four fucking boosts <laughs> in four weeks. That is what, 12 plus, I guarantee. That is 12 trades in four weeks so what does that leave him left how many do we have 46 at the start we of have the year? one we have 1.7 a week so if i pull up my calculator so that, that'll be so that'll be four four trading rounds so in if we're using perfect theory he should have used in perfect theory he should have used 6.8 trades my man's nearly about to double that absolute champion awesome. i really want to know how this works out i can't do it um i think sabs from the sc experience is is i mean i've been talking with him this week he's potentially Float of the idea. Surely He's in a really good position, though, Sabs is. Yeah, surely you're, you're, you're not, your team's not in that bad. My team is fucking awful. And even I'm sitting here going, I might only just make one trade this week. Like, my team is terrible right now. But even I'm not looking at doing three boosts in a row. I'm not, I, I mean, I, I don't hate it, but it's just like, fuck, it's aggressive. I'm, I'm tempted to use my second. And I'm still thinking about it. So, about and that. I'm not using my second. This is just how I play Supercoach, though. I'm, I'm a bit boring. Like, I'll play the long game. I'll attack the buy, the buy period, 13 to 19. I'll make my move then, and I'll come home strong. But that's just how I play. And Brent obviously plays really aggressively. Uh, he also asks about his trades in the Discord, the same trades, about 17 times per week. And we love Brent for that. Um, but I, I think four boosts in four weeks is way too much. Um, so yeah, watch him do four. He's going to pull his fourth without even a question this week. The last bit of advice I gave Brent was don't sell Hopgood and that worked out well. So I'll give you my next <laughs> bit. Don't use a fourth boost. <laughs> just, just chill out. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Uh, Levi Jones wants to know, I have Turbo. What do you think about should we hold or trade and who for? We've spoken a little bit about Turbo. I'm leaning towards trade. 
I'm leaning towards hold. So I hope we help. Um, I'm Matrix leaving is the, uh, towards permanent factor. I'm leaving towards hold. Um, but if I was, it would be for Gutho. And I think you guys are both agreeing that maybe you would go Pappy given the opportunity to trade. I just think, like, everybody has to play the Panthers at some stage. Let's just cop a shit score from Turbo. Um, his draw opens up later. Fair enough. All right. Ian Johnson actually thrown a lot of gold nuggets in the comments tonight. Predictions this week is Matrix won't be the top out of you three guys. Wrong again. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my team and I'm fucking not the top. So it's down to you, Brano. <laughs> I'm going to be going aggressive this week. Maybe I'll just make three trades and just fucking try and get this top shot. I, I want the little trophy me, next, to, uh, me, next to my name. Meanwhile, these two are just playing head to head every week, but against me. I'm just a fantasy player. I'm just a fantasy. I'm just a simple man. I just play fantasy and AFL. That's all I play. Um, Hoodie Your Mum asks, is it Grant season? We've been, we've been waiting. This is what we wanted all preseason. We said it's going to be tough, stormy waters for the first five, six weeks. I'll tell you what, though. If it gets, if it gets to round 10 and the prick's still averaging 58. <laughs> you said it's been stormy, right? I would have drowned by the time Grant actually scores well if it's round 10. Uh, I'll be very concerned if I'm holding him at round 10 and he's averaging 57. That'll be he a is this year's Reed Money from last year. Oh, don't do but that. Inst- inst- instead of performances, like Reed Money's first two rounds, it's just reputation. Oh, that is, that is probably the biggest slander I've ever heard of a good player on this podcast. To call Harry Grant Reed Marnie. Uh, I, I don't know how to react to that. Goodness me. All right. Well, next one. We've got uh, – oh, geez. All right. Uh, Sam Hughes, Fermore, Taylor May. Are the three players that are going out, I'm assuming there's a boost happening from Shapes uh, out for Talangi, Olam, Flegler, or oh, fuck, okay, uh, Smithies, Hughes, Salmon out for Talangi, Henry, Curran. Okay, so what got, we're looking at is Talangi is coming in. Yeah, I've got no Hughes interest in Olam. I've got no interest in Olam. I've got no interest in Henry. Like I think Henry's the ship's sailed. I think it it, it left the docking station last week. So the question is, right, let's disregard Olam and Henry. Talangi and Flegler or Talangi and Curran? Am I reading that right? Can I, yeah. yeah. So Flegler Can or I... Curran? Probably Curran just because on the edge. I think there's more upside on the edge when he gets front row for Jill. Um, out of all those, like, I, I don't think Firm, I think Firm is a massive trade. I think Sam Hughes is a fine hold. And I think Taylor May is a fine hold. I, I, I just don't like these moves personally. Yeah. I was just going to say it a bit more dickish and say I fucking hate both those moves. <laughs> and, like, I think, may surely you have bigger fires than to just move those guys out. Uh, Spack, Aka, Aka, Aka. Uh, Joe Chen, what's the story? Uh, played for Catalan last year. Um, promise me, no, look, Joe, Joe Chen, infected hand, um, was supposed to come back this week. And uh, get a better username, but I think he'll be fine. We touched on this in the storm preview. I think he'll be better. He'll be fine. Um, some clown in the match matrix, Matt Matt Ricks, someone. Uh, he he's just putting some waffle in the chat as usual. But yeah, Ian Johnson actually gives some good questions. Unlike you, Matrix, you pelican. Will Josh Curran not get dual now that he's played two RF? Ah, uh, mate, buy a dartboard, spin it on Maxis. Throw a dart, and that you, you, your your answer will be there. I think he does get Jewel. I think Sangster has teased it enough that he will. Um, I don't agree with it, but sure. Yeah. It doesn't really follow the trend of what they've looked for the last few years of starting players starting in a position that hasn't been injury affected. Like obviously, Curran has had to play through the middle due to a couple of injuries through through the period of the season, um, and also he's come off the bench. So those are two things straight away that don't really kind of support the explanation that they've gone with from the last couple of years. But in saying that, it's uh, from the conversation that they were having on the pre-lockout podcast for the Super Coach, the official Super Coach podcast. Uh, it sounds like they're all on board the uh, current front and forward train. And when you've got guys like Rugby League Guru propositioning for front row forward, it just has to happen, doesn't it? So um, lock it in. Whatever. Uh, Adam Thompson, is selling Turbo and Talakai worth it to get Ponga and Pappenhausen? Now, this is hot. This is spicy because this is two yeah. fullbacks coming in. Yeah, but is it Ponga and Pappenhausen or is it Gartho and Pappenhausen? Oh, I still think you... 
you bring in Ponga over Gutho. Like, I've been talking all this Gutho propaganda, but I think Gutho over Pappy is a thing, but I think Ponga over all else. Okay, so you're ranking them KP, Gutho, Pappy? Yes. Oof. All right. That's... KP, Gutho, Pappy. Okay. So I'm you... probably... Okay. So I'm probably... Mm. Fuck, I don't know. The Knights just suck. I'm probably KP, Pappy, Gutho. Yeah, that's me. I was about to say the same thing. I think KP is number one. We look at the rest of the games that KP has. He's got through that tough little fortnight where he played against the Storm into the Warriors. Yeah, real then, tough. He sold for those tough games where he's two fucking best yeah, games. Yeah, real tough, wasn't it? Uh, and then he's got Dragons, Roosters, Bulldogs, Dolphins over the next four weeks. Like, fuck. You, oh, he's, num- he's number one pick. If you can get up to him, I reckon he's... I'm just guy. concerned about... Whatever the fuck Adam O'Brien's doing with his halves, because it's now the fifth change, or fourth change, sorry. So we've just got Jackson Hastings to come back in to pair with Jack Cogger with Braley at nine. So it's like another a new spine. And that's my only concern. And it's like we know at Parramatta, it's like when she hits the fan, let's just give Gutha the ball. It's true. Yep, it's true. But in saying that, I feel like the the Cogger and Hastings combination is the best combination at the Knights. Yes, it's a new one, but it's the best one. Because Tyson oh. Gamble is, I do I do agree, but it's just like we saw how dog shit they were together in like what was it round one, or round two, but that was when like a million ball players yeah, on the field. All right, let, me, let me put this to you: Is KP thirteen points over the next six weeks? Is he thirteen points a week better than Pappenhausen? That's what the price difference is. Oh. No. Let's let's see how this works out from round five onwards. Because I'll, I'll say no, just for the sake of it. I think I, I think, think Pappy could rival KP within thirteen. That's seventy eight points that, that KP's got to be better than Pap. And then the question becomes: like, like this is a this is an EPL trope. It's like if you buy the expensive player, you're going to captain them. So we'll use it for NRL. How many weeks between now and say round ten are you going to captain KP over Cleary or? whoever. So you've got the Dragons in round five. You've got the Roosters in round six, but then you've got Hines against, you know, the Bunnies. You've got some other good matchups like uh, Gutho against the Cowboys. You've got Turbo against the Seagulls. If Walsh is back, we've been huge Walsh advocates for him jumping on. He's against the, the Dolphins and then their draw opens up. You've got Pappenhaus against the Bulldogs in round seven. Uh, he takes on the Dogs, which is a good matchup. But then we look at the Tigers taking on Penrith. We also look at the Sharks taking on the Cowboys, who have shown uh, proper seed league points. Um, and then we see Gutho taking on the Dolphins. So I'm probably not captain KP in any of those games apart from this week. And then we look at the next round, which is round eight. The Knights are taking on the Dolphins in Suncorp. But we have Cleary taking on the Cowboys. And we have Nico Hines taking on the Warriors and Gutho taking on Manly, and Turbo taking on Parramatta. Like, I just don't think the money that you spend on KP, I don't think he's going to outperform the field by as much points as he needs to, and I don't think it makes up for the fact that he's going to be a captaincy option either. Like, I'm not only looking at one of these games where I'd captain him. Fair call. I mean, that's one of the deepest dives of a question we've done. So that's what you've got your money's worth there, Adam Thompson. Absolutely. Uh, let's move on to Wayne Mulligan's question on C and K being a point of difference player. This CNK, have we? Fullback, we only, fullback only this year. That's, so his appeal is a little bit less. Yeah. I mean, it's his first game back, like from, from an injury that's had him out of the out of the team for how long? Like oh. four to six? Like, oh goodness. You missed all the preseason. Probably, probably longer, yeah, because preseason's a long time at times too. Like, I don't know, like, if I'm not getting Cam Munster this week, I'm not getting CNK at the ridiculous price. Like the appeal of CNK last year was he was cheap. And I got him in draft in like at like 104 in one draft. And so I'm excited about CNK coming back, but not for classic when we're arguing about your pappies, your pongers, your turbos, and your guthos. Like CNK doesn't even have a seat at the table, unfortunately. 
as much as we love him as a player, yeah, you're right. 100%. I think um, I know that the price the price difference is probably a little bit different, but I think if you do want a piece of seeing KB, you don't want to use a valuable fullback spot, then Dalmo Tennis Lesniak could be the play for you. I think he he comes in at 726k, so a little bit steeper than um Charles, but he does still open up a fullback slot and you still get the stack. Well, not the stack, but you still get the points that Chance will give you. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I think RTS, I think RTS kills um Chance on the, on the on the left. I think the ball goes to RTS and that's it. Chance's involvement's done. But I think on the right, SJ to Chance uh, opens it up for Dallin. So I think you get more points for the line break and the try from Dallin than you will from the line break assist and the line break from Chance. He's matching up against two of the slowest treadmill wingers in the competition in Isaac Thompson and Tane Milne as well. Like who are not known to be defensive minded players at all. So and, I, and, I not, and, not, the, and not the greatest cover defense in Latron Mitchell. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um uh Simon Brown, very quickly. Time to get Ronaldo back, Brano. You know you want to. I do not want to. I would rather avoid that completely. Thank you. Um he I think the time to get Ronaldo was two weeks ago. I, I don't think we need to get him. I'm seeing a lot of people like saying, Oh, Ronaldo's too he's too shaky, I can't own him. Like Surely that's what you bought him for. Like, like, what's changed in Ronaldo for you to sell him? Like, unless it's your first time and you don't know what you're getting yourself into, like, this it's the roller coaster. It's the Ronaldo roller coaster. But since people this bought him, Ronaldo, gone, he's gone fifty six seventy eight. That's that's not screaming sell for me. No, at not seven hundred and thirty k, and you bought him at six twenty. Like, I have Ronaldo. I bought him probably in the same situation that Brano bought Dom Young, and I'm happy. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not necessarily upset about Dom Young because I didn't buy him to versus the Panthers. Yeah. Bought him. No, Hold it's a hundred. That's what I'm saying. It's the same. Like you're going to roll with him for a few more weeks and you know, the Sharks are still going to be the same Sharks and the Roosters have been great. Like you bought these guys to Ronaldo's averaging 84. Like what is people, what are people worried about? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. For sure. Um, Ryan Tosato is asking, how long is Moses out? The the word was eight plus weeks. Um, so that's, that's what we know at this point. So, yeah, Talangi, definitely a good shout. Uh, he'll get some decent time there in that position. Uh, uh, Josh, is Labut to Bostock worth a boost? Next question, please. No, I, like, the only reason I've, I've held Bostock is this game. Like, it hasn't been great. The role, what we thought was there, wasn't there. Labutt, that's, you, mean. you know, we'll, no, I mean the role. The role for Labor just wasn't there. Like, we'll put, we'll, I'll put my hand up and say it probably went early. But the role looked like it was there. The eye test was there, but it just hasn't materialized. Didn't play 27, 23. So he scored fifty points in three weeks, which is lovely. Um, we'll give it one more week if we cop a little bit of a price drop, then whatever. But take the match up this week against the Titans. Titans yeah, it's just too good. Yep. Uh, Chris Maxfield Matrix wants to uh, sell two out of Fermor, Satili, and Burbo. Who are you keeping out of those three? I think I sell Firma and Burbo. I don't think any of these are really urgent trades. I think you're going to want some, I suppose, something really good to go to out of these guys. I think that they'll all hold cash this week. Um, but I think Firma and Burbo, but I think over the next maybe two or three weeks, you'll probably trade them all out. I think Satili is the most priority there. He's the one off the bench. He's the one with... Uh, I think the highest break even. I think his break even is 30. I don't know what Burbo is, but what Firmas is. It's probably somewhat high. About 40, I think Burbo is. 39, something like that. Yeah, Burbo's is about yeah. 40. I don't know what Firmas is, but Cecilia's is 38. He's off the bench. If he plays 20 minutes off the bench, I've got no interest. Um, just count yourself very lucky that you didn't actually incur a price drop. You've somehow made some cash out of him and just move him on to maybe a more square-headed Roosters back row. Levi Jones, uh, Lusick to eight uh, to Grant with eighty k spare, or do we do Jesse Arthur's to Bostock and keep three hundred and eighty k in the bank? Uh, that's a big cash. Uh, no, just do Levi. I just do Lusick to Grant. I think you're just paying for premium points in a position that's pretty ordinary. I mean, look, Happy Corus has been decent as well. So, it, do you really kind of want to lean into Grant when you could go to Appy? You go to Reese Robson. The, the, their two probably options aside from Grant, but I've got Grant I mean, in my team. I think Reese Robs is probably the best buy. Uh, I mean, because he won't go to Origin and doesn't have a buy until around 15, I want to say. Uh, if you need a hook, Did Reese Robson play Origin last year? Yeah, but he's not getting over Cook and Appy at the moment. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, so yeah I, I think Appy's back in the fold now for Origin. So, um, do you think? Oh, think, think he's, do you think his his escapades at camp will also be back in the fold? Do you think he'll be sneaking women in when he's married? Always. Uh, Why wouldn't you? That's that's our club captain. <laughs> um, no, I think if you need a hooker, <laughs> I'd be getting Robson. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, actually, we already had this question. Labour to Bostock. Uh, everybody's off Labour. Oh, bring it, bring it up. Oh. Bring it up again. I dare you. No. <laughs> um, hey man, what do you think about Labour? <laughs> This has been an interest. This is an interesting question, Michael Griffiths. What is the, the trade in potential for Fermor? Um, so where everyone's talking about trading him out now that David Feed is back, Michael Griffiths ready to bring the bloke in. I want whatever prescription Michael. No, I think he's place. wondering who does he trade in potentially for Fermor. For Fermor, I hope so yeah. because I want I want whatever prescription he's on because <laughs> yeah, you want to trade out think... Fermor for sure. If I and misread that, that's, that's on me. Or Kai Pierce Paul. It's KPP if you don't have him, and then it's probably Lane if you don't have him, and then Karen if you don't Gus. have him, and then probably Gus. Who's the um? Who's the premium option if he wants to pay up? Hamali. Yeah, Cam Murray. Good. I'm glad you said that. We can stay friends. Um, Cam Murray's been we got... scoring well. He scored 78 last week. Do you think Hamali plays Origin? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I I knew. Like, sorry, was that a question? No, yeah, does Hamali play play. Origin. Yeah. He can pick for New South Wales. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about Cam Murray. Um I'm not saying your username again because I look like a moron. Is the back white with the back white cap available on the Inside Fantasy Sports store? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm a little bit zesty, so I've got uh, a little salmon, salmon a salmon band uh, with the with the salmon brim. But uh, the boys are just repping the uh, the Oakland Raiders and the uh, Four Points Brewing Company. Four Points Brewing Company. So, um, yeah, we might get some. And you've also got to have a very patchy beard and yeah. a shit super good drink. We will sell those on the store as well. <laughs> That's why Matrix has a good beard and a good super coach drink. Doesn't he's not <laughs> and a part shit of that. hat? Uh, yeah, a beer hat. Uh, Isaac H. Latrell to Val Holmes this week. Now, would you go Latrell knowing we talked about the stats around New Zealand Warriors and their leaking points to fullbacks? Would you still go to Holmes against the Titans, Matty? Yeah, 100%. Like, I think that if you have the opportunity to bring in Val, this is the perfect situation. I know you're paying a premium for him. You're probably paying for him at his peak with an average of 91 and having that 144 in his rolling average. But if you captain him, it makes it worth it. Fair call. Tommy Leesman. I'm, just, I'm sorry, it's, go just, it's, just, it's just like the draw is okay. Titans this week, which is great. Parramatta at Combank, Sharks at Points Bet, uh, Penrith, and then the Dolphins, which is great. Titans, which is great. Souths, Tigers, and then he's away. Um, it'll be Origin into backing up against the Warriors, and then it's the Panthers in round 17. He doesn't miss that, but he won't play that all together. It's just like he won't he won't play thirteen, he won't play six, and he won't play nineteen. Because you're buying him now. Like if you buy him now, it's you're not trading him out. That's the thing with Val. It's not a oh we'll jump on him for a couple of weeks. Not like you're paying eight hundred and thirty k. You stick this out. So it's like, do you want to be holding him or do you just try and death ride the crap out of him? Well, I think he's good enough to hold, personally. Yeah, oh, no, he's, he's good. He's good enough to hold. But it's like, can you can you be it. okay with missing a guy for three weeks out of? seven in the middle of the period of the year. Um think so. Sorry. Yeah, I think do, I think, think I am is? okay with yeah, I think he's good enough to to hold him through that period. Um I'm a big Val believer at the moment. Brought him in fantasy. Um big there's a big chance I bring in Val this week and chuck V C on him. Is Val good enough for you to forego a fullback at the moment? Because that's what this question is. No, but that's, if that that's fullback is Latrell, like let's talk about how much I didn't really like the Latrell trade. I think that I'd rather bring in a Ponga or yeah. somebody like I, that. I think but, I think yeah. I think a Pappy or Ponga or Gutho is better than Valentine Holmes, and that's my dilemma. It's like Val's great. I wouldn't be sacrificing a fullback for him though. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just going to jump would... the gun a little bit with a super chat because um, we should get to those straight away. Sure. Um, Gabe and Ben. Ben, 
I don't know which one of you threw in the five bucks. Maybe it's two dollars fifty each. Um, but um, he's got Cherry Evans at halfback, and his vice captain is Kieran Foran going into round five. Do you think that is a good solid pairing? And I'm going to ask Braino for this one. What do you think of Kieran Foran at five eight? Um, he's probably going to be scoring more than my current two in Luke Metcalf and and Lachlan Galvin, <laughs> but um. He will, be. he will be scoring better than your two. Do you remember the time last year where uh, Kieran Foran scored a hat-trick and got 100 super coach points? <laughs> I can tell you right now, he's not going to do that this week. So I, I would advise against... Uh, so if, if you've already got Kieran Foran, I'd probably look somewhere else for a vice captain, maybe someone that's playing earlier in the round. Um, but secondly, if you've bought Kieran Foran, I would reverse that trade. Um, Kieran Foran, unfortunately, as much as I love Kieran Foran as a player, has never been someone who is super coach relevant to a point where he's never really scored well consistently in super coach on the worst team of in the competition this year. I, I would say I'd probably avoid him. I need to and work out. This, I need to work out if this is a troll because if this was like a non super chat, I would just berate them. But I'm like, you've given me five dollars of your hard money. I don't know if this is yeah, a troll. That's right. Um so I'm gonna treat it with the respect that it deserves for a five dollar super chat. Um Cherry Evans at halfback's fine. He's not doing well, but he's not terrible. Uh, and Kieran Foran. I would love to know the insight on on why Kieran Foran, um, out of anyone to pick as a 5'8", because uh, you're limiting yourself there to Sean Lane or Gutho at captain. So, uh, yeah, as Braino said, if you bought Kieran Foran, um, then then reverse. But if you own him, um, yeah, I'd be looking looking elsewhere. But most importantly, thank you very much for the sip chat, Gabe and or Ben. 100%. And and for sure, like I guess maybe to add on to that, VC early in the week, um, oh, not, yes, not yes. a guy late in the week. So you know, VC, VC early in the week, so you've got that option. It's not like VC gives you more points. You don't get any multiplier. It's only if they do well, then you can do what's called a VC loophole. Uh, and okay. if you uh, stuck with that, message one of us, and we'll get to it. But um, yeah, let's get back to some more questions before we wrap up. A, a quick one from Paul Vards, um, who's in the Discord, long yes. follower of the show. Yes or no on this trade, Satili and Tuapiki to KPP and Blaze is a lock for me. That's a, that's a fantastic trade. So Smash. Rip in the map. Versatili. Uh, Matrix boost Brooks to SJ. And why is the answer no. yes? Not boost. Yeah, really. I think so. I don't know if it's boost worthy, but if you're worried about losing cash, and you won't be able to afford SJ. Um, I think Braino put it in a very good point earlier going through the Warriors draw going forward that this is a great few weeks for for SJ. Um, now is the time because backing up, I don't exactly know Luke Brooks's uh, break even, um, but he's not going to score well against the Panthers this week. Um, SJ, I think, is going to go on a little bit of a run over the next four weeks. Um, Luke Metcalf is not going to be doing the goal kicking this week. Yeah, I really love the boost Brooks to Metcalf. I think that's worth it. Uh, yeah, I, I look at Brooks' break even. It's 88. Um, and you're going to lose every bit of cash he, that he's made you. And in a perfect world, I'd love to see SJ with, with CNK just for one week. But we're not going to get that. So, yeah, probably all systems go. I I was talking to Matty earlier about the Nico Hines to SJ move this week. And and the reason for, for my thoughts around that is that obviously Nico will buy this week. We know that Cleary is going to be back in two weeks. He's going to be versing the Tigers. You're going to have to try and get him back for that matchup. Now, Nico plays Souths, who haven't been great. Cowboys, who have been questionable, but they've been okay at times. And then Canberra, who have actually been okay. So he it's not like he's got these massive, amazing matchups coming up, Nico, Sorry, in the next three rounds. The same Canberra he just scored 100 against. Yeah, what what do you get? 90. Are you ser- with your season? This are you turning your nodes up at 90? No, but listen, <laughs> l- listen to my logic. All right. So SJ, his draw, he plays three of the four teams that like the most super coach points this season. So he plays the Souths, he plays Manly, he plays St George, he plays the Gold Coast Titans. Five, six, seven, eight. So you can get four rounds of SJ playing against teams that leak the most super coach points this season and then trade SJ straight back to Nico Hines in round nine against the St. George Illawarra Dragons where he punished us last year. Tell me that doesn't yeah. interest you somewhat. No, that, that gives me no interest because Nico Hines' draw from like 11 to 14 is awful. Um, and you just said Souths were good against Nico, but then they're bad against SJ? When? You just said they... Oh, he plays they bad? You just said he plays Souths and they've been all right. And then 30 seconds later, you said 
Oh, he played South. They've been terrible. I don't know. I, just, I don't. I think stick with it. Like if you're gonna go SJ, stick with it. Don't trade back. Um, I think Nico because Nico plays like Melbourne Broncos and Penrith. Like back. If back, you stick, back if with. you stick with SJ from round nine, he plays the Knights nine, Roosters ten, Panthers eleven. Might be sorry. My my apology. I, I definitely got those two mixed up. I think one of them played because we discussed this last week about that roulette of flipping them. Um, I don't know. I just haven't seen enough from SJ to be good. Like he scored 75 last week where he was probably the best on ground. Um, so it was like. Does the, the goal kicking not entice you at all now that he's clearly got the T back? Not really. Because the Warriors just haven't been putting up points. Like I know the Warriors look good. They, 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 they have struggled to put up points this year. Um, they have. Like they, they had one good game against Melbourne. But even then SJ didn't go well. And even if you give him the goal kicking, he's only scoring like a mid 50s. I don't know. I'm not an SJ guy. Never have been. Uh, but that's just my two cents. And my rank yeah. obviously, you know, suggests that I, I think, know what I'm talking about. So I yeah, think SJ is the next best to Heinz in the next coming weeks. Like, and I guess with the maybe that a, was, sorry, Matty, go with maybe a Jerome Hughes third. Like, I think he's going to go to anyone. I was just about to say, have we just like that, that scene in Toy Story where Andy just dumps Woody out or Buzz Lightyear out? He just forgets yeah. about him. Like, we were sitting here like, like giving it the the two hand the, the two hand jerk last week for for Jerome Hughes and yeah, now all of a sudden we're just like nah bum. Well, Metcalf, Metcalf's out. Tamari Martin is not a massive ball player. I think an Adam Reynolds and um, Ezra Mam situation. Like Reno's going to do the work. Tamari Martin's going to run. Um, SJ's going to do the same sort of. I think SJ's going to do the same sort of things out there with the goal kicking uh, team feeling, in an feeling, improving New Zealand team. I'm feeling a bolt a bit. Because I'm not okay. keen on SJ. What are you? What, what what are you setting? Like average for the next what until round ten? Get, yeah, but who are well, we going against? Hines with a bar. I, guess Nico. I would yeah. take I would take Nico and whoever his replacement is. This okay? Give me Nico and Sam Hughes. So give me one week of Sam Hughes and Nico from now until the end of round ten for yep. until and and then I guess stack up against SJ. Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. All right. Book it. It's one week of Sam Hughes and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, uh, so it's it's a six week play. So it's one week of Sam Hughes and five weeks of Nico versus six weeks of SJ. This yeah, could make cool. yeah, this yeah. could be fun. We'll we'll track it every week for sure. Um, and very, I'm hoping very, for Hines. I'm keeping Hines, but mate, Sam Hughes double this week. <laughs> oh yeah, watch. he's a mudded. <laughs> um, very quickly, Hamo wants to know how sober you are tonight, Matrix, because he's just thrown in a an, another super chat, and you know what this means. Um, because he needs a standard square shot from you, which happens every episode now, and it's compulsory because he's paid for it. So for everybody on YouTube, they get to watch. I, I did it's um home as well. From um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's elite. From, thanks, Sato. Yeah, from Sato who uh, heads up the standard squeeze. So uh, thanks for his support, and thanks for Matrix, and thanks for Hammer, who also supports the show. But we've also got another super chat here for me and Johnson. Cleary historically doesn't score well versus the Tigers, and the Panthers have never beaten the Tigers in Bathurst. Punters club on the Tigers. Matrix doesn't even get a choice in this bet, I don't think. <laughs> I have I bet that I um I've tipped the Tigers this week in my um in my uh tipping comp, and I've actually yes, got that in my multi as well. So in my own personal multi. So all right. Two hours, three minutes, a lot of dribble. It's probably Two podcasts we in a row, boys. Back to back nights. Jesus. I know. I know. And we've probably got another. We've got the unlimited QA coming up as well. Whether we do that tomorrow or Thursday or someone does it, one of us do it, two of us do it. I don't know. We'll work it out. But um, thanks for thanks for joining us. Two, we've still got over 100 people watching at two hours and three minutes, which is completely at insane. 10 at night, you absolute sickos. Go to bed. Yeah. Legends, <laughs> legends. But we will be going to bed. Um, that'll do us. But good luck for this week. Hopefully plenty of green arrows. I saw 2,000 of green arrows and I thought it was going to be fucking terrible. But it's uh, it's been good. Thanks for joining us. We will see you Sunday night this time for the wrap-up. Um, otherwise, good luck this week. See you then.